with some news that is pretty JV. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on a choice with you. Amanda, you get it on. Excited about playing uh, JV or all ball Sheck in studio. Uh, Max Pattis, we have an announcement we shall make in uh, oh, very, yes. very due time, Hello? short time. Oh, boy. Um, stuff to talk about. First off, with uh, Sheck, a sports. You know sports, right? They, uh, yeah, sports are a passion of mine. Good. It's come up before, hasn't it? <laughs> We've twice. talked about it. I could you swear hail. we have talked. You're from Kentucky. I know no, that. I'm uh, Pennsylvania. Close. Oh, I'm not, not that big far away. Not Nittany Lions fan. Yeah. No, no, yeah. I hate hate them. Like the Panthers from Pitt, their arch rival. Close oh, though. Oh. Two cats. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I know. I'm tuned in. So, <laughs> I was watching. I don't watch a lot of tennis, mm. but I do watch some tennis. Bringing up tennis the day after so many of your pals. Love the Boston Celtics at the mm. time of the circuit. They won their 18th title, but mm. tennis is your choice. Tennis is where I'm going. <laughs> okay, so be it. And I see, well, it's their 18th title. It's enough. It's right. enough. I see Some the point guys it's showing off. in the women, tennis players, they walk out to the tennis court and they're always schlepping three or four bags. They're schlepping their own stuff. They're mm. like beleaguered travelers going to Southwest and Burbank, and they couldn't carry on, or they couldn't check one because it was 40 extra bucks. And now they're just pack muling it on. Some of the mm. richest, most elite athletes playing the daintiest sport there is mm. have to Sherpa their own junk. You wouldn't uh, see a golfer uh, do that. They right? have caddies. Right. 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 And then at some point, they go out there, and the tennis game begins. And they serve up a ball, and it hits the net and falls down. But it, now, at this point, they become gentry. They become elite. <laughs> they go, hey, boy, go get my ball and take it back. Well, so which is it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's inconsistent. You should have a Sherpa or, you know, a bag boy. they got a ball boy. Mm-hmm. Let's have a bag boy. Have the bag boy bring the bags out. Why do you need to bring your own equipment out to? Think Tom Brady's like setting up Gatorade containers and shit before the Super Bowl. Is it Have like a some- part-time kind of situation where they don't want to go over the hours that the ball boys are working, and to have them carry the bags might dig into that, and they might be having to pay overtime as a result? Because mm. it doesn't make sense, and I've uh, never noticed this. And good for you for catch. That's uh, by the my way, job. I know, but uh, but a random question that I'll forget about is, I was watching some uh, auto racing the other day, and it occurred to me that when the pit crew came out and was doing the marvelous thing, which we still don't really celebrate enough how cool it is. It's a pit- ballet. It's a mechanical ballet. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's a ballet. There are now more things that are ballets than actual ballet. It's a love letter to tires. Everything's right. a love letter. Everything's too, a to love everything. letter and it's a ballet. Uh, yeah, I'm going to write a love letter. It's an to ode love to love soon. letters about ballets about mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> but I was wondering, and surely the answer is yes, they do. But what does it look like to, when motorcycle racers, do they have a pit crew? No. They don't. Well, they don't change the tires. I ah. uh, Listen, I, I, I've seen some GTP stuff, and I do not believe there's a tire change. If they do, they just do the same version. Interesting. So, two. like, they must need gas at some point. Do they, like, stop and do that thing like you see at the gas station where they're filling their own <laughs> tank? Without I would, also be bad? Here's what I would say, in, and I'm not an expert in motorcycle racing, but in all motorsports, they have what are called sprints. Short, fast races, Mm. and they have endurance races. And there's some motorcycle endurance races where they're going to have to refuel and maybe retire, except for there's a sprocket on the back and a chain. So you're going to have to kind of deal with that. It's not as cut and dried as NASCAR. But so. But I will get to. I will. I will. Bring I'm sorry. This yeah, I, I derailed. I just wanted to ask you about so that. But this it, is fascinating. It's a noble sport, this sport of tennis, mm. and it's 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 in terms of sports. You know, it's not rugby and it's not water polo. It's it's rich elite people and some of the highest profile, biggest name, most well compensated athletes are at the top of the list in tennis. Why are they schlepping their own bags out there? Could there first of all, it's probably the most dangerous thing they do on the court is try to lug four <laughs> bags full of Wilson tennis rackets and sweaters and God knows merch, you know, out there. Uh, they drag it all and they're always carrying their own their own stuff. And it used to be one bag. Now it's now it's three bags. So shouldn't somebody do that and or eliminate the ball boy? Go get your own ball. You I, just hit the net, bitch. Go get it. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, why are you so good? But you're not so good that you don't have to carry your own stuff. You do have to carry your own stuff. And now I think we have what a, you a and I, boy. I think what you, where, where the overlap is on our Venn diagrams is what we ask for is consistency. Consistency. You know, right. I think that's something that so you have and I both bag, would point a, to. Let, this is weird. Okay. Let the ball boy be the bag boy. That's what I'm saying. Because he's walking out at the I'm same time. I'm saying like they don't want to pay him the overtime required for him to show up a half hour earlier to carry the rackets out. Now, They're like he's on the clock once the match starts and not a second before. So this is all stuff, and I'll I'll bring it around to automotive racing because it's like. Remember several years ago, there was a golfer with the bad hip or something, and he wanted to take the golf cart, but they said- He had we a can't, degenerative disease Yeah, or some we sort. can't ruin the sport yeah. by putting you in a golf cart, even though it's got the word golf in it. You know, it's not a tennis <laughs> cart, it's a golf cart. <laughs> so why can't the guy who plays golf get in the golf cart? And the answer is because he has to walk, because that's the sport. And you go like, well, what what advantage is it really? It's it's all just it, it's all just window dressing at this point. So I was saying, bring it to car. <laughs> the the, impl- the implication is that the fatigue of walking the eighteen holes <laughs> yeah, right. is enough to swing a tournament. This <laughs> right. this lollygagger is going to ride around in a right, cart, right? <laughs> Yeah, Unfair. Everyone's, everyone's like, going to be physically depleted by the time they walk. You ain't doing push-ups, yards. right? In you're between your thing, you're just walking. <laughs> yes, and someone's carrying your back. Black guys carrying your back, <laughs> which they have. Which you're right. The tennis players should. So, the answer is there's always some old rule. Mm. And 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 back to automotive racing. I was uh, at a guy named Bruce Myers, Beverly Hills Garage, uh, Father's Day, a Rodeo Drive, Beverly Hills Father's Day thing. And at the end, you end up at this guy's amazing garage with multi-million dollar cars or whatever. And we're looking at a Porsche race car from 1967 or 66, and it's a 908. It's kind of the same one Jerry Seinfeld had, and we're trying to find that, whatever. Now, Sonny's smart, he's inquisitive, and he also doesn't, like his dad, doesn't get the parsley by the side of the plate of life. Mm. You know what I mean? Where someone goes, what's with the parsley? Yeah, you got to have it there. Why? Because it's, because people did it before. And you go, but does anyone eat the, no, no one likes the parsley. Well, who eats the parsley? Nobody, but we have to order more parsley. (laughs) And then at some point, they stop, and no one says anything, and we just move on. All the rules, like all the rules, like, yeah. oh, you couldn't go on after, like if you did Leno, you couldn't do Letterman, you know, and you couldn't, if you did Letterman, you couldn't do Leno, and that was a rule for 20 years, and now you just do that show and do this show, and who, nobody cares, because the second the unnecessary stuff goes away, then nobody nobody cares, so we're standing in this guy's multi-million dollar incredible car museum, and he's looking down at this Porsche, which is an open cockpit type Le Mans car, and Sonny says to me, uh, he goes, why is there a passenger seat? Because this, they're not, then there's no passenger in the car. Mm, why is there mm. a passenger seat? And I go, it's a rule. And he goes, what do you mean a rule? Why, why a rule? Why would you need a passenger seat if there's no passenger in the car? And I go, that's eh, just a Lama rule. Yeah, you, know, you got to have a spare tire. You got to have a, he goes, there's a whole big, like, magneto thing screwed to the uh, firewall behind the, the seat. So right where your head would go. And in, in other words, there's a big mechanical chunk. Just uh, your head would hit the... Because mm-hmm. there's a thing. I go, Sonny, get over it. There, 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 no, no good reason. This is what we do as human beings. We make rules and then we follow our own rules. And even if they don't make sense, we are bound to follow these rules. So mm. if you want to race Lama, you got to have a, a passenger seat. I mean... And then what ends up happening? I said, I said, son, I said, and remember Ford v. Ferrari? And um, remember he was down at Willow Springs at the track, and he was racing his uh, Cobra and the Scrutineer, greatest name in the world, Scrutineer. Yeah. I'd be so good at that. said, you got you to gotta get the piece of luggage has to fit into the trunk. And he's like trying to shut the trunk, and he, he's like, he doesn't need luggage. You know what I mean? He's going on a sprint race around around Willow Springs for an hour. He doesn't have luggage. It's a box that's supposed to be luggage, but it's a template that resembles luggage. And you need to be able to shut the thing. And he, Christian Bale just gets a hammer and starts pounding away and denting it up so he can, which is a true Uh, story, shut, physically shut it, even though there's not going to be anything in it. So these are the rules. 
You know what I'm saying? And why do the Williams sisters who make $2 billion a year and have dog walkers and get mani petties and have night nurses and wet nurses and nannies up the wazoo, why do they have to carry their own crap? They don't carry their bag when they're walking off the private jet to play the tournament. Someone's in charge of the bag. They'll why do they the have to do it? Minimum distance. They right. I, I, well, the second they leave the tunnel. The answer is those are the rules. Let me say something to you. Please. I, I, it, it, you couldn't have brought this up at a better time. I, it, it's uncomfortable. Some mm-hmm. of the reason why, I'm not saying it's the only reason, but a big reason why we don't change these dumb rules is because it's uncomfortable to be the violator of those rules. Yes. I'm not just talking. I'm, I, I live it. I think I've mentioned it to you before. I'll say it again. Many years ago now, 15, 20 years ago, I decided... I'm done with bless you after somebody makes, oh, me too. makes the noise. I, I'm done. <laughs> Wait a minute. You got some schmutz, whatever. So, so you got some boogers, whatever's making it happen. You sneezed. Now, of course, this started in the dark ages, but we don't live in the dark ages anymore. But they used to say it because it was an indication because they didn't know any better because they were residing in the dark ages that maybe you had the devil in you and God bless you. But we live in the 21st century. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm done. Uh, I don't do it anymore. And then people give me the stink eye. Well, can I and say And then you're this? being rude. Why? Because I don't acknowledge your body sound? What? The, the, it's a body sound. You're right. Yes. I, 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 we I'll expand you, I'll, that I'll to you, all body sounds? I'll Slippery you, slope. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what's worse. I, I, was like, I don't like the God bless you, but then I don't like it when there's multiple people and then someone beats you to the God bless you yeah. punch and now yeah. you're the atheist who's self-absorbed yeah. and doesn't mm-hmm. feel like God blessing you. Someone shames you by saying it first. That's number one. Number two, um, I, I don't sneeze, but when I do sneeze, I do it in bunches. Yes. And so I do the first sneeze and I get the God bless, bless you. you and man. now I go, now I'm nervous because I know four more are coming. Mm-hmm. And this poor sap's going to have to say God bless you. So then I do the second one. But where's the cutoff? Mm. You know, because at some point someone has a sneeze attack. You can't go, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. You're going to have to cancel your meetings. Well, yeah, now you're right. jamming me up. So when then you I give me, when you person. say the bless you, then I got to say thanks. Then I then sneeze I again. Thanks. They say bless you again. Thanks again. Now I have to apologize for yeah. disrupting. Yes. Your and step. I have to tell them there's a third and a fourth, so I'm waving off. Right. They're God bless you. Here's another one. Okay. I, 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 I Believe me. me, I got at least a couple more. Oh, this one always bothers me. It, everyone knows the casting couch, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. They go, oh, she, you know, Weinstein, you know, who's famous for the casting couch. Or back in the day, that's how it worked, the, the casting couch, right? Mm-hmm. And then you kind of thought to yourself, is it really a couch? You know what I mean? It's most likely a bed or the floor or the bathroom, you know, or a potted plant or something. But it's, we just say the casting couch because we have alliteration. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, yeah, the casting couch. It makes sense, At least make right? it cute. Right. Right. But then when a guy lets the heroin get the better of him and he loses his job and his wife throws him out of the house... And he goes to a succession of friends' houses and crashes on their couch. Mm -hmm. They call it couch surfing. Yeah. It Mm. should be sofa surfing. (laughs) Use your own alliteration. Mm -hmm. It's a casting couch and sofa surfing. It's not couch Mm -hmm. doesn't have a monopoly (laughs) on this piece of furniture. It's also a sofa. It's just as much sofa as it is couch. Certainly. And we're using alliteration because we like it. You're not physically surfing on a couch. We get it. You're strung out. You're crashing. And by the way, you're on the guy's futon in his basement. But we call it couch surfing. It's sofa surfing. Or we can flip the script. Which do and, we like? Are we going to be casting. consistent? That's we can call the it the point. casting right. sofa. Mm-hmm. Would you like that? No. <laughs> what would people answer for that? Would anyone want to live in a world with I don't think you would. Casting Sova? <laughs> so, from this day ends, it is okay. casting couch and sofa surfing. Um, I just had Joey Mulinaro, the great impressionist and comedian, on, on my show, and we were talking about this very thing, sneezing and everything. But also, in the last 10 or 20 years, I've been belly aching about this as well. You always hear reports coming out of the Cannes Film Festival. Oh, boy. 
We've talked about this a number of years ago, but yeah, it, this this I definitely makes the people. list. This yeah. makes the list. It, it does. Kevin Costner made another cowboy movie. I'm looking. They liked. Do you know they liked it? How much did they like it? Eighteen minutes standing oh, ovation. Yeah. No Eight. <laughs> but like, but but I every time. Oh oh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Brandon Fraser. Brandon Fraser gave a wonderful turn because he got fat and played uh, uh, the whale. The whale. Yeah. That was an eighteen minute standing yeah. ovation. Too much literally, pressure. literally standing. And the whole rules of the sta- I don't even like the start of a standing ovation. Mm. I feel as though this is people show again the same thing as like the guy first one. Bless you. But, I I got thoughts. Okay, good guy. Hey, by the way, if I know you and you and I sneeze, a bless you, thank you, person I know. When we're waiting for to, to get on the plane. I don't need you to. I, mm. yeah. We we don't know each other. You don't have to acknowledge that I made a noise with my body. You know mm. that, that we don't need to do that. The standing same same person who oh bless you oh bless you again and bless you a third time um, is the same person who starts the standing ovation. Then well, I we, get dragged out of my seat. Yeah, oh, are we, you going to do this? And I love when he fails. I love I love when the guy <laughs> wants to start a standing ovation. Mm. Then he stands up and he looks around, mm. and then he makes a decision. I guess I'm the only one. I'm going to be a man of uh, of print. I'm just going to keep on applauding. That guy who stands up there like a dope the himself. The standing ovation, and it's so funny, because as you were saying the word Kevin Costner, I was highlighting Kevin Costner on my, my list. Mm. Um, cause I think he does deserve an 18 minute standing O because he just invited me to come stay at his Colorado ranch whenever Holy I want. Holy hell. 150 acres of serenity and I, canoeing. I think and, I, I'm glad for his bounce back because, it, you know, relatively speaking, I don't think he vanished from Hollywood or anything, but he has certainly had a big latest mm. act in his career. People forget mm. of him in his 80s. Uh, you know, it was, it's the same thing I, I always like to say. Say a, a baseball analogy for you. If you would have told me on November 1st, 1988, Daryl Strawberry, Dwight Gooden, Fernando Valenzuela, and Oral Hershiser will all not get into the Hall of Fame, you would have been like, well, that's an impossibility. They're, yeah. the, they're the best players. Those, you just Now named- you sound like my girlfriend, but keep going. <laughs> keep going. This is her rap. But uh, She yeah. used December, I think. <laughs> 80, this, I mean, but the, anyway, anyway, the same spirit, same, same the, guys, the, the spirit same of, yeah. uh, of the point is um, mm-hmm. is sound. I, I don't even remember where we left off. I got so swept up the in baseball. The fact that you're something with Costner and the fact that these guys were first ballot Hall of Famers. Costner, no we forget that he was not just the sexiest man alive, but he made No Way Out oh, and yeah. Field of Dreams. And by the way. Because I like to pat myself on the back. I once had the occasion to interview Kevin Costner. And do you know how I closed that interview, Adam? A kiss? <laughs> Close. I asked him, and this is just because we moved past Father's oh, Day. Oh, I, I know this what up. you asked him. I said, you want to have a catch? And That's we had a right. football right. catch. Great arm. I had a catch with yeah, he had a hose. He threw <laughs> a ball. He was playing catch with Sonny in a field in Santa Barbara and was chucking it 55, 60 yards. I like that. It was awesome. He airing it out. They're NBA guys. When they throw a ball, you're like, what the hell, man? What happened? What the the hell? Noodle. Running backs throw a ball. You're like, what the hell? You've been (laughs) around it your whole life. You never threw it? You never? This is like your 11th throw of your life? That's how it looks. (laughs) So, uh, Costner, I was talking to over the weekend. Talking to Costner. Always throws it out. I mean, not always, but I've been at his place before in in, uh, Ventura. But I never did the Colorado Crossing run. The state borders. And he's just like, uh, I didn't bring it up. I mean, mm. why would I bring it up? But he just goes, hey, man, anytime. I rent it out. But if it's open, say the word. Come on down. And uh, free. And, uh, you know, bring your kids or bring whoever. And I was like, oh, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. <laughs> also, he's going to come on this show uh, very soon. Whoa! As, I'd like to be there for that. Well. <laughs> Yeah. Bring the football. Just so we can reminisce about our catch. <laughs> yeah. So he'll be coming up soon. I'll be going to his uh, premiere next week and uh, are you I'll gonna be bring up curating in that uh, that villa. Are you gonna bring up the soul patch? Mm, I might. You might mention it. I think the soul patch looks all right if you've got the cowboy mustache over it. Yes, yes. 
It's a very different message you send to the world if you're clean shaven on the upper lip, but down mm. below, soul mm. patch. Can't have the solo. Yeah. Patch. So on a separate note, I was walking uh, through Malibu and uh, I passed a parked car and I, I took a picture of the bumper because I don't, in general, I don't like bumper stickers because I don't like you conveying information about you to me. <laughs> I, and, and it could be how many kids you have or who made the honor roll and or whatever about your dogs or, you know, the, I, my neighborhood, they plant stuff in the front yard about their teenager who graduated high school. Blanket and, statement. Uh, don't need any of it. Don't I, need any of like it. Not like it's okay if you want to let us know that oh, you're a doctor I, it, and that's how you made don't need any of that information when I'm driving the car. No, and 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 some can be hurtful. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I've told you a million times when I was at my lowest, you know, driving a beat up pickup truck and uh, living in an apartment with three guys and sleeping on the floor with a futon, and my girlfriend dumped me, and I was making nine dollars an hour. I just pulled up in traffic behind someone on the 101, a nice sports car. Blonde lady driving, and the license plate frame said, "Yes, I do, but not with you." Oh. And I thought you got that right. <laughs> Boy, did you nail! You Good got thing the- I have Ray without any shoes on, riding <laughs> hump on my motorcycle here. Yeah, you got the right person behind I'm you because I concur completely <laughs> with that sentiment. I don't know how you knew I was going to be behind you, but yes, I agree. And I actually feel a little bit worse. <laughs> Pulled up next to her, gave her a thumbs up. You're correct. You don't know how right you are. This guy's bumper sticker <laughs> says, honk if you love dying and being dead. That's on. And I would argue this. Look, I'm I'm not I'm not uptight. I'm not a pure, Puritan or anything like that. But if somebody said... Do you think it would be okay for people to display pornography on the back of their car? I'd go, I don't think so, because kids could be in a minivan and reading, the, seeing these images. Like, you know, the, like the ones that just say, fuck off and die. I was like, I, that's, that should be good for a parking ticket. There, there could yeah. be some kid who's got leukemia or something, who's nine, who's sitting in the pageant, or mom's explaining things are going to be okay in the world. They're the cosmically, or, you know, he's reading "fuck off and die." Like, Last week, I you, saw you get, a, you get a fucking citation. Now, look, yeah. look, if you have an illegal tint on your windows, <laughs> you can, you will get a citation. And if you have no front license plate, so can we just agree? Pure profanity on the back of your car for all to see. I mean, maybe Agreed. I'm a Jehovah's Witness. You know what I mean? And I'm walking You've around changed, Malibu. Adam. I said maybe. <laughs> so the one says, honk if you love dying and being dead, which I don't know what part of Spillican Corners at Knott's Berry Farm this guy picks up. Where do you even buy that? I, you, that's, that's a prison bumper <laughs> yeah, sticker. You make that prison. You don't buy that on eBay, do you? And the other one says, no, period, I don't know how to fucking drive. You know, this is aggressive, is yeah, it That's not? right. What it is, is Adam, see, people pr- uh, miss. All, yeah, also ahead, the please. car's a piece of shit and it's littered with junk on the inside. So whatever this person's putting out into the universe, they're not doing a great job with it. And it's parked on a nice side street in the hills of Malibu, where mm. people are just like walking their dogs and their kids and all that kind of stuff. I think that it is, the very often, I used to tell the story of at, um, at the Kimmel Show, the producer walking into the writer's room and going into like a really blue story about like, eh, last weekend, I was with this chick and she, I had her like, and it was really like, What's your name again? And like you're coming in here to spill these details. Mm -hmm. And it is an attempt to be funny. Mm. And people, you know, I I won't count myself in the funny group. I'll say Adam Carolla is edgy and as is anybody who is successfully funny. Parts of being funny are edgy and inappropriate. And the shortcut to that without any of the soul of the humor is just being crude. Being crude, people people conflate crudity, the F word, with being funny. And very often they're right. If most people don't, you just get everybody wants to, and the other thing is everybody has to express to the world these days what a badass they are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, oh. Everybody's a badass. Another bumper now. sticker. Right. Another bumper sticker I just saw. No picture, but I, I wrote it down. Uh, 
I was having, I was fresh off a conversation with Dr. Drew about women basically going batshit crazy, like f- having fist fights in airports and screaming into <laughs> bullhorns. And it's the, the women crying and screaming at cops and the bullhorn about Hamas and stuff. These are like 19 year old chicks. And then chicks are duking it out at the Southwest counter, you know, the Atlanta airport. And I'm like, Women never acted this way. I never saw this. I, I never saw women physically throw down. I didn't see them melt down the Karens at the Costco or whatever. They, so this is new. It's I new blame the WNBA. They're going berserk. I blame them. <laughs> oh, sure. And the bumper sticker said, as I was just hanging up with Drew about uh, women going crazy, uh, it said, it said, well-behaved women seldom make history. And that's another one of those self-congratulatory things, which is they think everyone's Rosa Parks, except for all you're doing is screaming at somebody at a Costco to put their mask on. That's not Rosa right. Parks. Be you know disruptive. what I mean? You're just being you're being a pain in the ass and being noogy and pushy and bossy and talking to people you've never met in a horrible, disrespectful way. That's not being making history. You know, that doesn't make you Lady Godiva. Right, but then again, but everybody again, it, this millennium now feels like it's their role to to and, and one yeah one more thing is yeah I, more, one, more stuff I didn't know, need to know about oh, you please I, no yeah, I'm right. saying on the back of your car I did not need to know that <laughs> so we live in a world we, we we will be okay with a citation for a guy that's dropping f bombs on his bumper. Yes, but I do want to keep our eye down the line on this list of rules that should no longer be rules. Obviously, we could do we could talk for a week. Hench and I talk on minus three constantly about the sorry state of officiating in every sport that we obsessively watch. And it's like, hey, what are you going to do about it? Like, use the technology available. We have the video at home. We see that that was the bad call. Mm -hmm. Fix it there. You can say to the referee, that was the wrong call. Hey, that was the wrong call, everybody. (laughs) We're changing it. Game moves on like that. That's another one. But I want to keep our eye on this list of things like sneezing and otherwise that we really need to amend. Make the the world is fine, but it could be even better, Adam. Uh, last car related, uh, since we're on a theme, I wasn't even going to bring this up, mm. but there, I, I sent a picture while I was at Bruce Meyer's shop with, uh, Sonny, uh, alluding to the, uh, 935 Porsche that won Le Mans outright in 1979 and finished one spot in front of my Paul Newman 935 mm. Porsche, which my car won the GT class for different reasons. But this car is the last production car to ever win Le Mans outright. And it's going to be the last production car to ever win Le Mans outright because now they're spaceships. Mm. There's production, like GTs, Corvettes, 911s. They mm-hmm. run in a separate class. Then there's the hybrid, crazy, ultra, you know, super GTP stuff that doesn't resemble anything you've ever seen on the street. Uh, there's no way a Corvette is going to beat the hypercar in today's modern Le Mans, which just took place a week ago or half a week ago or whatever. But this was the last one to ever win it for various reasons. And they had the open class. I and mean, they had the big-time cars in there, but it rained, and it was like open cockpit, and cars broke. And this car just miraculously won, uh, as I've said before. But I was uh, at the guy's shop. I think I got the picture there somewhere. I just sent you a picture. And we went and uh, looked at it, and Sonny then looked at it and saw one of the stickers on the side of the car read KKK. And he said, uh, hmm. what's that about? And I was like, that's simpler times. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, those guys normally did the NASCAR circuit. But uh, it, it, I said, KKK is probably a German company because I don't think they do that here in the United States. A, a company wouldn't volitionally call themselves KKK. <laughs> And um, it's probably you're probably not dumb enough to go out into society with a KKK sticker. A couple. I, I actually I don't know. I sent oh, there's probably other pictures of it, but uh, there's it's all over the car. And then I said, K, it's a turbocharged car. So K is probably compressor because in German it's K, uh-huh. as uh, you've seen on the back of certain Mercedes. Right. So because like compressor right. I mean turbocharger mm-hmm. supercharged. So there is a triple K German company. I don't know if they're still around, and if they are, did they uh, change their name? Because my whole thing is either have to take a K away, or you could add a K, 
which would just sort of confuse people, but it would still dodge scrutiny. But I don't Fair know. otherwise, if your name is Adolf and you're 15, you probably should change the name for your sake. For your sake, right. I think Turbo Ladder is That's the right. company, right? Yes. And is Turbo Ladder still around? <laughs> and I'll bet <laughs> they made. I bet they cake. they did. I bet they built the cylinder heads for the Panzer division of the Nazi war machine of of the <laughs> tanks or something, right? They must have been around. They've all been around since World War II, so they did something horrible in World War II. I'll bet you. I've got another question for mm. you. Back to the rules that just we have to abide by. Oh yeah, like the comedy. The the comedy I should should tell you is if you look at the back of Steve McQueen's um, Lama race car, mm. the the Gulf livery nine seventeen. The thing was just a flat out spaceship, but and it had no stock parts on the thing. It was, a, it was a spaceship, but if you open the back bonnet area, you would see a little miniature space saver spare that didn't resemble the car tires at all. The car tires were huge, big slicks. This is just a mini rubber band around a hmm. miniature plastic rim that they had to have in the back of the car. No one would use it and never change it. It was just you had to have it there, part How, of the rules. What a weird custom that there are... You know, you want to know outmoded thing. Well, you want to know something that's weird. Uh, th- you know what's weird about this? So here's the problem with rules, and 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 it and it works this way with like the tax code. They go, look, the the spirit of the rule is, look, you you got to have a passenger seat, and you got to have a spare tire, and you got to have working blinkers and stuff because those are the rules, and this is a touring car race or whatever. And at the beginning, people go, all right, leave the passenger seat and leave the spare tire in. And then at some point, somebody goes, well, that seat weighs a lot. Why don't we, but we need a seat. Oh, because we make a miniature plastic seat that no one could fit into. Okay, do that. And what about the spare tire? Oh, that weighs a lot too. Well, then make a spare tire that doesn't weigh anything that no one could ever use. And they go, oh, okay. And they they end up doing it. This car, you want to hear how diabolical, how diabolical, car guys are and car guys all they do is cheat because that's all that's part of their business is trying to cheat all the time the regulations Mm -hmm. the regulation is is look you can't change the glass in the car the front windshield comes up the roof goes down and then the rear window goes down that's whatever shape a 911 is that's the shape of the glass well they wanted to change the shape but they said they couldn't and they did a whole rear clip that just added a second rear glass over the other rear, rear glass. Not because just to just they wanted that shape and they said, here are the rules. And then they constantly go about. I mean, even in, uh, you know, even in Ford v. Ferrari, there's a lot of like Lama rules, rules. And some of them are some of them are sketchy. But the guys that win, the teams that win just skirt the rules. They just tweak them enough. Like when Gus kicked the field goals. <laughs> <laughs> I do love the the modifications that have happened in our lifetime. Like the biggest one maybe is baseball and we just kind of gloss over when we look back at I I'm DiMaggio and prior to that like their gloves were just piece of just uh squares Garden of leather. Glove. Yeah. And then they would leave it on the field for their foe to pick up and use for the next half <laughs> inning. Really? Imagine. Yeah. You would just be like, what a play by the guy at the hot corner. Look out, fellas. Here come the bill. Here come the Dodgers to the play next. And then you'd leave the your glove, and they would come out and pick it up, and they would use the same one. I would do the same thing with condoms with my old roommate. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the same woman. <laughs> All right. DFG's on the line. Oh, he is. DFG? Hurry up, that's the food. Yeah. What's going on, DFG? Hey, not much. Did you guys hear the big news? No. It's about Chris. Christopher like the model. Hmm? Oh, no, I didn't hear it. What's that? Oh, uh, okay. Um, oh, never mind. Oh, <laughs> talk about our, our <laughs> announcement with Chris? Yeah. I, I thought you were going to say, DFG, in the wake of these record high temperatures, you got to ask yourself... How are you going to beat the heat? <laughs> that's, How that. are you going to beat the heat? <laughs> <laughs> well, DFG, put it in a sen- Put it in a sentence, would you please? <laughs> With the mercury hovering near the triple digits, you have to look 
uh, into the mirror and ask yourself, how am I going to beat the heat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's true. Cool. Yeah, you got to ask. You got to be honest with yourself about beating the heat as the mercury climbs, you know? <laughs> I watch the news. They got tips. They go, you know, you got to drink water. <laughs> and if, like, you work on the roof, you need to get off the roof sometimes. And you shouldn't cover yourself in foil like a baked potato and jog. <laughs> you should go like Martin LA Lawrence. LA News literally did that two days ago. They yeah. literally provided tips of yeah. beating the heat. In Los Angeles. <laughs> By the way, you know how I said, all right. Here's what I said, and I'm going to be even-handed. I've said many times, I want to collect all the deadbeat dads by putting the sign in front of the Coliseum that says, free cockfight, Raiders fans only. And whatever dude walks in there is getting arrested because he's a deadbeat dad. (laughs) I'm going to flip the script to collect all the bad moms and the kids that need to be removed from the home. When I set up the cool zones at the park... On a Wednesday at noon, whoever shows up, I'm rounding them up. <laughs> like you, you obviously cannot provide for your children. If you have to walk with your seven-year-old to a park and experience mist, you're doing something wrong as a parent. You have no air conditioning. I don't know where you're living as a roof. You know what I mean? These people, by the way, it, it, you know, it's for poor people and the moms, and it's for seniors. They always do that thing. The seniors need to go, just kill yourself. <laughs> if, if, if you're 86 and you're taking a bus to a cool zone, and it, like if you haven't managed to s- sock away enough money for a window-mounted unit at this point in your life, after a lifetime of work, you're taking a bus to the cool zone at Studio City Park. <laughs> it's over, pops. <laughs> well, hey, we're, hey, we're talking about hey, sheltered. What do you think oh, excuse me. Of that dude that leave their car running with the windows closed so the pooch can be cool. In the parking lot. Mm, well, you know, if it's hot enough, I'm I'm fine. I'm fine with that. All right, DFG. Should we should we play a little JV or all balls? I don't want DFG to get a big head, but this happened to me. I don't know if this has happened in your house with Sonny yet, Ace. Mm. But we crossed a Rubicon mm. in the last few days. Mm. Jean Claude Van Damme, 14 years of mm-hmm. age, came to me, cell phone in hand. And he said, what's with the deaf frat guy, Maverick? He had videos of me with Maverick 15 plus years ago doing this, that, and the other. From where? From the Adam Carolla show. Me and Maverick, you may not remember. Oh, from the radio. Yeah, we would go out. We would go out. We went to Hooters and places like that. People would, people love to meet Maverick. They love the DFG. Yeah. And now now Jean-Claude Van Damischek is one of them. Mm. A new generation of fans. (laughs) Sorry. Go ahead, DFG. What house is he in? Well, he's just in high school what now. Frat? Oh, it's not rushing. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's going to rush a frat when he goes to college, mm-hmm. right? I don't. I, I think he might just be independent. He just might be a GDI. What do you think about that, Mav? Uh, hey, this is not... Uh, rush is something to take... Very seriously. This is not, you know, I don't know. This is not Santa Monica City College. He's going to have to find a house that's right for him. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you'll be his Sherpa, I assume, when the time comes? Hell yeah. As a matter of fact, um, a lot of dudes need guidance on what house is right for them. Mm-hmm. Of course. Uh-huh. So I'm doing a little consulting on the side. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. Side hustle. Right. <laughs> consulting business for for prospective frat goers. <laughs> Interesting. That's a good business. Wow. All like right. Some dudes think they will rush Kappa Stig, but they find out that the Kappa Stig at the, that school is not the cap, is not like the national Kappa Stig. Oh. They don't well, pull tried out to that school, right. maybe, right? Yeah. You get catfished. Or whatever. Yeah. All right, uh, DFG, should we start the game? Uh, Hell yeah. All All right, you tell us what it is. JV is bad. All balls is good. And we'll get your interpretation of that. Oh, yeah. The first one is magicians. Magicians. I've uh, sadly come up with a 
But you got to show us a picture of Shin Lim. Because unfortunately, this Asian guy, you can look it up, Byron, I'll put it on the thing. It's Shin Lim or Lin. He's all over Lin. Vegas. He's on every hmm. billboard in Vegas. And there's a poster of him. First off, they're, they, <clears throat> I decided many years ago that magicians had issues with their moms because the women who assisted them never spoke. They never uttered a word. And then at some point, they threw them in a box and cut them in half. <laughs> <laughs> and that shows a lot of a lot of anger toward toward women. All right, this uh, Shin Lim character, he he's looking at the camera and he's spraying cards. Right. I don't know if he caught those cards. <laughs> I assume he didn't. <laughs> By the way, you can take a picture of me looking all high and mighty, <laughs> full of myself. Picture. Give me a cup. Give me like three decks. <laughs> I'll look very earnest. Put some eyeliner on and spray three <laughs> decks at my open hand. I won't catch one goddamn card, but if you snap the shot at the right time, then I too will look like a master magician. <laughs> now, people would be disappointed when they come to the show and I get the cards out. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody said anything about catching the cards. There's 12 <laughs> pictures of him spraying cards into an open hand. I don't know if he caught... I, it, it seems photo. It seemed uh, like fake news. <laughs> yeah, like all those photos of Biden fake. walking. It's it's fake. It's a deep fake. Now it's not. I want to see the one on the billboard. The one on the billboard is him spraying it at the at the camera. <laughs> and so uh, Penn Gillette told me he knows that guy well. Yeah. And I said, I don't trust him, and I don't know if he caught those cards. And I don't believe him. Maybe that's not the message he's trying to say that he knows how to. He just merely is bragging to the world. I can spray cards. Maybe other people are well, making assumptions. Hold on, David. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say I'm putting together a billboard campaign for Benny Hanna, and I show the guy throwing a shrimp up. Yeah, we can. Ass we don't think it's stuck to the ceiling. We think it landed in his hat. Well, the greater magic trick would be if those cards, when he sprays them about halfway through, they just stay in the air. Now, that's a magic trick. Well, they do stay in the air through the magic of the billboard. That's true. See? But there. Okay. He's a liar. Okay. I need an after pick. All I've said is I need a second billboard where he successfully caught the cards. That's all. There's got to be some <laughs> rules in magic. You want my money to come and see your show, I'm going to need proof. Okay. So I don't trust this uh, Shin Lim <laughs> character. Um, I don't like... A lot of these magicians, they, a lot of these dudes get more booty than Captain Crunch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, and, and I know Copperfield uh, has got his island. That guy must have a, a, a great publicist, because like, ev like every... Four years, some Copperfield you know, brought underage girls to his island, and people you know, and this thing was ah, I brought him to an island, but I didn't do anything to him. He's on like, the Epstein I, track. Yeah, it, it's but his stuff pops up and then it goes away, and it never really sticks or lands. Right? Well, they want to be spooked. They want to have this because they're magicians. They need to have this uh, this um, mysterious quality. But they all, I mean, every single one of them seems like a big dork, right? Well, they started as big dorks and then got cool. And they get cool. Yeah. I see. But they're all dorks in high school because you wouldn't be able to do all these and they tricks. They lean in more heavily like they were in a in a metal band or something like that. Like <laughs> Nobody, Chris Angel. It's a lot of solo practice. Nobody when yeah, you're right. in junior high and high school, and Mav, you'll agree with me on this, right? When you're in junior high and high school and you're dude and you're getting a ton of tail, that is your skill. There is no second language. There's no play the saxophone. There's no uh, press the digitation or sleight of hand. You don't learn other skills. Your skills is nailing girls. That's what you learn. <laughs> you don't learn anything else. All the guys I knew who got laid regularly in high school, that's what they did. They, they eventually stopped doing everything else. They just did. That was their job. John Popper was a fat guy in a basement who got no poonanny and who just sat with his harp all day in a basement. 
So the first 10 years of, of your child's life, you should try to steer them into dorkiness. If you want them to learn a second language, a skill, an when instrument, or something like that, yes. And then they become Jeff Bezos at some point. But, Jeff, you know, or all any of these tech wizards or any these, this, these were all nerds from... From high school, they got nothing. Jimmy right. Page, maybe not a handsome guy, but you know, mm. probably ran through them all when he was on think, tour. I'm with trying to think the, the guitar- zap. I, oh, that's that's for sure. But I, I, I bet that guy got some tail in high school. All right, anyway, magicians, look into the David Copperfield story, Dawson. It pops up every four years. He had an island. Something about an island. An yeah. island is strike one. <laughs> No one, no one buys an island to bring their family. Nothing good ever happens. Nothing on a good happens island. on an island. <laughs> That's a sad irony, isn't it? It's sad. You would think owning your own island, boy, <laughs> kids are gonna love it. Bring the nanny. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, listen, you don't even have to hear the more infamous ones. Uh, it, it is. Trust me, you don't want your own island. I don't trust this Shin Lim guy. I don't know if he <laughs> caught the cards. I don't trust this Copperfield guy. So I'm gonna go with JV. I disagree. I think oh. I think magic is all balls. I love seeing magic. I love the the mechanics and the sleight of hand. I actually hate the people who try to catch the magician mid trick mm. and, and ruin the trick. In With front of you me. on that, person. yeah. So I I love magic. I'm all for it. All balls. Right. It should be a passive experience for for the consumer. Yeah. Same as like I I can't stand the people who are like oh I, I I knew what the story was in six cents about. 11 minutes into the movie. Good for you. Did you enjoy it then? No, you just wasted 90 minutes of your life, I guess. In other words, I'm going to go JV here because for all their hocus pocus, it's all about can they pull the rabbit out of the hat. I'm much more impressed by Mav's ability to get into Ashley from Tried Out and the one with the shaved, you know what? The other Ashley, yeah. All right, Mav. The one with the shaved bush. That's yeah. The, uh, that's mm-hmm, the one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's saved down below. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, got we got it. <laughs> Is that what he means? <laughs> but they're well, both ashes. The yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, the answer is JV, bro. Oh. I don't like being tricked. Don't try to trick me. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's right. All right. That and now, sense. I didn't pay all this money to get tricked. I don't know why you put the Copperfield story up there and then took it down moments later, but I would say you can you can leave it up there. We were talking about it. Um, so David Copperfield. Sixteen women. <laughs> but here's the thing. All right, it says, and I don't know where this is. I have no idea where this is from. But this is from the L.A. Times. It L.A. Says, LA Times. David, David Copperfield Co- denies sixteen women's entirely implausible <laughs> sexual misconduct <laughs> allegations. Who's saying they're entirely implausible? I bet David his and people, his legal either team. Either Copperfield or right, yeah, his rep. Right, but don't if you're the L.A. Times. So you're saying he's saying by it's putting entirely, entirely implausible in quotes. In, you're, you're, he's saying it. Right. Misconduct allegations, famed illusionist David Copperfield's denying accusations made by 16 women alleging decades spanning sexual misconduct and inappropriate behavior. Wow, this is from middle of May 2024. I told you it pops up all the time, but it just goes away. But 16 women are saying this. And and by the way, you know the thing about magicians, we don't know what category to put them in. So when like an A-list act, you know, so here's what I'm saying. Uh, Army Hammer. Hey, you know, sends a couple of sexually charged tweets about, like, the barbecue your ass and eat it whole or something. We're going, that guy's a cannibal. cannibal. And we decide he's a cannibal because he's talking about aggressive sexual, you know, biting. Biting is part of sex for some people. They like to nibble on the neck or whatever. We just decide he's decided he's a cannibal, even though there's no <laughs> real evidence that he consumes human flesh. But okay. <laughs> and we all go, we go all in. Now, it seems to me that Copperfield's allegations are a little more... You know, pointed. Than Sixteen, the, than the, hard to align. Get right, all your stories right. together, but, spread but over decades. Athletes are easy. You know, the pitcher for the Dodgers that got Trevor Bauer. Right? Trevor Bauer got destroyed, and all these other people get destroyed. But magicians, not they're not they're n- neither fish nor fowl. Like we it's don't know where to put them in the celebrities. Them, even though, as hard as they're trying, from Chris Angel on down to be this to be this mysterious. 
you know, edgy bad person. We see what you are. You're oh, a dork. Wait, no, 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 no. It's the opposite. No, let me tell you something, Mav. They think here's what they're worried about. They're worried they're going to come in with the feds, slap cuffs on Copperfield. He's going to look down and laugh, and a puff of smoke is going to pop up, and the cuffs are going to be sitting on the floor. The That's guy made exactly the Statue right. of Liberty they, disappear. They you don't think you get out of San Quentin? Sorry, go ahead. They are too afraid to arrest them because they will look like fools when they disappear. Or, <laughs> or he gives one of the feds the evil eye. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> poof, that guy disappears, and everyone starts looking at each other. Like, who's next? <laughs> Filling out this paperwork for a potential felony ain't worth being cursed for the rest of my life. Every I'm not doing right. third escape thing's an escape from a prison cell. <laughs> so they know we don't want to build an entire new facility for magicians. And then you know? again, though, but like if Brad Pitt, you know, we're, we're courting a lady, like, there's, a, you know, he has an edge and he's Brad Pitt. If it's like David Copperfield, you see that he's a dork, and therefore it's not threatening even after. It's sort of like a hyena or a hippo. Mm -hmm. These are these are fearsome, dangerous beasts. Mm -hmm. But the hyena cackles, so he's hard to take seriously. And the hippo's a slob, mm -hmm. and so you're like, oh, what the hell bad's that slob gonna do? You know, but like a tiger. Now you're not going to mess around with the top. You you, right. you respect him. You you fear him after the fact, right? So. I, I, Brad I Pitt is the tiger. I just don't. I don't think we in our mind have a category for magicians, and that's why they they're never they confuse us on me, more way, in more ways than one. Don't I would they? be willing to bet that some of these women were past assistants. Mm. Yeah, just because those are I I don't see him really interacting with any other women, and I'm sure that there's some <laughs> abuse they going hate on. Women. <laughs> They you do. can tell the one who is the assistant because she is sawed in two pieces. That's right. Oh, that's she's a, she's that's in right. two places that's at once. Tell. She's getting coffee and picking up my dry cleaning at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, keep Brilliant. going, Doss. I want to know what the hell else. And is he cutting checks? And, and why little to no interest? That's all... You know, Danny Masterson from That 70s Show, he's, like, w accused of raping his girlfriend at night, you know, when they were sleeping in the same bed or something. Like, it didn't feel – he's in prison for the rest of his life. Like, they went all in on, yeah. on that guy. We had to get him off the mm -hmm. street. He was married to somebody else 10 years later or whatever. We're on him. Not so much interest in Copperfield. It, it is kind of – scary that we're seeing it now it's like some we're crimes the feds get really motivated on and others like yeah we're gonna do and that's what's going on but copperfield i don't know I, I how like he's Mav, dodging all Mav's this interesting theory is that they fear being made to look a fool by the magic of copperfield that's my theory or i'm sorry that's adam's theory that <laughs> mav stole yeah, the seat. They put the cuffs on. Adam him. said it. The straight jacket. They laugh. <laughs> they take the straight jacket. They hang him upside down yeah. in front of a shark tank. There's no and way. Poof. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Sorry. I have some info on uh, the person suing David Copperfield. Her mm -hmm. name is Lacey Carroll. Her first interactions with Copperfield bore many of the hallmarks of the accounts of other young women who have made sexual misconduct allegations against the celebrity. Met the entertainer at one of his shows. Uh, according to a civil case, Copperfield called her on stage to assist him with one of his tricks. After the performance, one of Copperfield's assistants asked her to wait in her seat after the show. Mm -hmm. She was given a questionnaire and told that a picture of her with Copperfield would be taken. Um... According to the lawsuit, one of Copperfield's assistants told Carol the magician had a private island that she might be asked to participate in promotional activities there. Mm, <laughs> Questionnaire. Promotional. Promote this boner, baby. <laughs> Listen, all you have to ask, what is this lady's name again? Lacey Carroll. Yeah. Lacey. That's all you need to know, bro. She's hot. Yeah. All but, right. In her she's lawsuit, hot, but she she's said, after his money. Oh. Her family was not allowed to accompany her when she went backstage to meet Copperfield. They began to exchange phone calls. <laughs> Ultimately, sounds about Carol right. invited to the island. No red flags for you, huh, Lacey? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Not, no, leave everybody else behind. Just you. Come on back. 
No, I guess he's just like wants a one-on-one to really dig in on the business possibilities of me promoting his island. Stay here, family. <laughs> she alleges in her lawsuit that Copperfield's assistant assured her others would be there for a promotional opportunity at the island. But when Carol asked whether her boyfriend could come, oh. she was told no. Oh. <laughs> this all checks out. But she was told everyone would have their own room. And she would have access to email and telephone coverage. She could stay in touch with her family. She described her journey from Seattle to this small private island. It claimed that once she got there, no one else was in attendance. Copperfield allegedly told her people would be arriving the next day. That night, the two had dinner and then began to watch a movie when Carol alleged Copperfield attacked and raped her with a dildo. Whoa, jeez. <laughs> a magic dildo or just a standard? <laughs> Amazon style. His magic wand. <laughs> his, he was his trying magic... to make her virginity disappear. <laughs> well, his, his last name is basically Copperfield. I mean, if you really <laughs> right think there. about it, when the arm goes around, you know, he's yawning, watching uh-huh. the TV, you know, there's going to be some over the sweater boob grabs. The next day, according to her lawsuit, Copperfield ordered Carol to get naked on Copperfield's private beach. And when she refused, he held her head underwater causing her to fear she would drown. Copperfield warned her not to tell anyone about what had happened, the lawsuit alleged. She claimed Copperfield untied her swimsuit top and forced Carol to masturbate him while he fondled her breasts. She said she walked on the beach and then returned to her room and went into the shower. According to the lawsuit, Copperfield pulled her out of the shower and assaulted her again. Is that Mm. technically accurate? Can you masturbate somebody else? Hey, I'm with you. I, I, I don't think so. You can give him a hand job. Right. right. Masturbate suggests I'm doing it myself. Yeah, or masturbate yourself. If you masturbate oneself, that's sort of like score the basketball. You hear mm-hmm. that a lot with the analysts. Like mm-hmm. he's, he's not doing a good job of scoring the basketball, as opposed to scoring what else in the midst of this basketball game we're watching. I'm with you. I, I'm having trouble with uh, the clear at the LAX now and clear – security at all airports because you go in and they tell you bring your eyes in focus in and then they snap that picture and then the computerized voice goes thank you for the picture of your eyes and i just go just say picture (laughs) we know what this is i'm not gonna be confused i don't think it's my groin they don't need of your eyes she says it over and over and over she's gonna you say the picture is complete but they go the picture is complete Want to go get something to eat? Like food? Yeah, yeah, food. (laughs) Food's what I'm talking about. (laughs) All right, so uh, what's the next one, DFG? So, yeah, Copperfield. The next one is is a very elusive thing. It is umami, the elusive thick scent. Oh, it's elusive sixth sense? It's like a sixth flavor or taste. Oh, scent, are you saying? Yeah. It's a sixth sense. Oh. Isn't it like the perfect combo of something? Isn't it like umami the perfect combo of flavors or otherwise? Isn't that what that there is? There are five basic tastes. Salty, sweet, bitter, sour, and now this one, umami, which is like savory. Mm, so that's where the umami burger comes in. Right. Yeah, it was invented in, like, 1906 in Japan. Oh, okay. So is this JV or all balls? Yeah, it's umami, <laughs> JV, or all. And they also say that umami, like, the biggest place to find it is in anchovies. Mm. Mm-hmm. Look, I love an umami burger. Uh, anchovies are good, used sparingly. And, uh, you know, don't. Don't cheat yourself out of a little anchovy when you're doing Caesar salad dressing. You Your have anchovy old in restaurant <clears throat> in Hollywood had a pizza with anchovies on it, and I never liked anchovies, and I tried it, and it was a delicious treat, and it added anchovies to my potential pizza toppings. Nice. All right. Thank I'm going to say- Have you dudes ever rubbed anchovies on your middle finger to pretend to your friends that you <laughs> finger blasted a lady? <laughs> <laughs> It's been a minute. Remember, yeah. When you were, a, remember being a kid and you would finger, really finger blast a, a chick, and for days you would walk around, you know, in a stupor, 
just sniffing <laughs> that finger with a, a thousand yard stare. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That finger would never leave that nose. Bring it no. down. Just, yeah. You didn't have a care in the world just smelling that finger with that crazy stare. No, it, it's it's really like a carpenter song when you say it. You know, like just thinking back on how young and free we were, and it was a smelling that finger, finger, thousand yard stare, stare not a care blast. <laughs> I was yeah. busy practicing my magic or something because I, in my high school years did not include any such. Or thing. maybe it's like a Brian Adams time song, like I did my first finger <laughs> blasting, <laughs> back into five and dime. smell like a sardine. <laughs> That's right. All right, I finger blasted till my fingers bled. Okay, sorry. All right, put that on a bumper sticker. Yeah. Right? All right. Um, I I got I'm I'm uh, all balls. I love it. I'm also all balls. I think mommy's great. I think anchovies are great. And uh, mm-hmm. I'd like to it. think that I'm a Mav whisper. I uh-huh. don't want to, mm-hmm. you know, I, mm-hmm. I'm not patting myself on the back for it too much. But I've known Mav a long time. Mm. This one is as confusing a JV or all balls as I've ever come across. There's no apparent reason why it would be JV. That's why it's JV. Mm. It's mm. like grad school, bro. Oh, you want the answer? Oh, yeah. Sure. Sorry. It's JV, we don't need any more taste. Salty, <laughs> sweet, bitter, and sour. What? Why do we need savory? You can just go inventing taste now? I, yeah, I didn't think about that. Check's right. Check's, the psychology is right. I, I was thinking the whole time, why would this be on there? But that's why you play the game. Check is right. He's out now there big league. Now a-holes are talking about making a thick taste, which is is um, somewhere between spicy and pungent. You know what? Oh. This is why, this is what happens. Like, what's wrong with recognizing the LGBT? It's like, uh, because we're never going to, because we're getting into two spirit now. It's the LGBTQI curious, you know, question marks. Like, you, once you start down that road, then you have to just keep adding gay letters or flavors. Then that's the road we're going down. The LGBT thing is 16 letters long now because we never, no one ever goes, all right, let's throw let's a letter out. We, we just keep adding the letters on and we do the same thing with taste. <laughs> that's been said a thousand times. Yeah. All right, check out your big lead. Number three. <laughs> Too many tastes. Okay, uh, number three. Uh, stoicism. <laughs> stoicism. <laughs> Deep. Mm, okay. I like Stoics, and uh, we need some more of that. You know, we need more Renaissance men, and I think that's part of Stoicism. So um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Stoicism and, and Stoics and Renaissance men. And I don't even, I, I, you know, the Renaissance man is kind of the cousin of the Stoic. I, I think there's some cross-pollinization there, but uh, we need more of these guys. It would be nice, you know, a, a politician who was like, you know, had a background where they were, you know, ran a you know small business for a while and then were in the military and then fought a little UFC and then got their doctorate from Harvard or something. <laughs> I would like that. I would like that diversity. So, um, Stoicism. I say now Sheck's gonna can go right back to his argument, which is what's it doing on here? I mean, it's positive, you know. It's like saying good posture, JV are all balls. You go, well, what could be JV about it? But it's being brought up. <laughs> I listen. You, you just heard about umami, and I don't like it when Mav gets hot under the collar. And you saw mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. He generally keep in mind where he came from. You know, listen, he doesn't talk about it too much. He's just one of the bros, you know. Mm-hmm. But sometimes he does. Oh yeah, little, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> listen. Sometimes, once in a while, I'm not making fun or anything. It is what it is. Sometimes Mav gets a little bummed out about his hearing. Oh uh, yeah, I've seen that. Same, you know, same. and he sits back and he regards the world in which. He lives, you know. He's mm-hmm. just, you know, just like he's just another little, uh, you know, little figure playing it out in this universe. I think he admires stoicism. Yeah, I think he's. I think it's uh, I, all balls. 
Yeah, I, I think it's all. Well, you know what? This will be our last one, and I got to try to get the tie here. So I'm going JV. I'll, I'll go all balls. Did David answer? Yeah, he, <laughs> he did. He, he went, went all balls. Stoicism. Moose, as you probably know, has the ankle. You know, he's got an anklet tattoo. It's like a wreath around his ankle, and it says, live, laugh, love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is opposite to Marcus Aurelius. Mm. You know, they're like, hey, <laughs> Marcus, Marcus, you want, a, a, you want that fifth goblet of wine? He's like, no, no, I, I have to work tomorrow. Uh. <laughs> now, but what is better to have a tattoo on your ankle that says "Live, Laugh, Love," or to be a man and realize your limits? Don't it all balls? Oh, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I was gonna go all balls, but I did. This game would go on in perpetuity. <laughs> Sorry, you just <Jack> <laughs> won it. <laughs> Well, DFG, thank you so much. And you're right. You got to, on weeknights, you got to turn down that fifth goblet of wine. Because, you know, that an early day of, you know, inventing the aqueduct or something. It it takes a certain amount of stoicism to walk back into the same university for the sixth straight year. You know, mm-hmm. be like, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's I didn't happened. finish everything I needed to, but as a man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with it until I get it done. Well, stoic DFG. Uh, you can shoot him a Twitter <laughs> at Def Frat Guy if you like, and uh, he's doing a little fundraising. I think oh. putting together an album as well, so you can do the Venmo at Josh Gardner Dash. 101. Josh Dash Gardner. Oh, sorry. Dash Josh Dash Gardner Dash 101. Help, sorry. His bro- help, his, help his boy Josh out. Yeah. Mm hmm. All right, my brother. Great work as per usual. Oh, yeah, that's the food. <laughs> All right. We'll take a quick break. Come back and do the news right after this. Simply Safe. I recommend Simply Safe Home Security, advanced home security that puts you first. Oh, yeah. We've used these guys here for, well, since. Pretty much since we started. It's a great business. It's a couple that started it. I think they went to an Ivy League school back when that was a good thing. And uh, some one of their friends got ripped off. And so they looked around for a security system and there wasn't a good one. So they invented one. U.S. News World Report says best home security system last five years running. 24-7 lifeguard protection lets you uh, lets the agents monitor and stop a crime in real time, speaking to intruders through smart alarm wireless indoor cameras as well. No long-term contracts, cancel anytime. Try it risk-free with a 60-day satisfaction guarantee. And right now, my listeners get 20% off their Simply Safe system with fast protect monitoring at simplysafe.com slash Adam. That's simplysafe.com slash Adam. There's no safe like Simply Safe. And now, Alcoa presents Definitely Not a Jew on the Adam Carolla Show. Dateline, St. Petersburg, Florida. An 18-year-old paralyzed man was charged with domestic battery on his brother after removing and hitting him in the chest with his soiled diaper. Definitely not a Jew. Check in studio, minus three, with our friend Kevin Hench. Extra oh, we points. had a great one on this Tuesday celebrating his 18th Celtics championship. Oh, sure. oh God. Yeah. The, I loved it. The, 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 the Red Sox and the, and the, the Pats and the, the, all those dormant years, many, many decades of... Uh, being snake bit as a franchise, and all of a sudden, just the, Cursed, the yeah. clouds open and the flood begins. And as, as I was, we were talking. I was talking to Mike August about. Well, here's what we were talking about specifically. We were talking about Ben Affleck, you know, and what a sort of mm. angry, miserable soul he is, you know. But smart, 
but angry, you know. And and so the Bostonian area produces a, a bizarre combination of very smart, angry, progressive, and racist. It's just like a weird bouillabaisse of things because they don't they don't you know out if you're on the left coast and you're out in California and you're very progressive. Just, Affluent not, liberal family is defined by the Kennedy family for the most part, and, and yet not, it's no, known for its racism more than any other major metropolis in the northern on the northern side of uh, the United States. Yeah, 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 and 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 angry and smart and angry. And which is a weird combo because most of the guys I grew up with, the angry ones were just dumb and angry, you know, and it's easier to stay angry when you're dumb. And then they can also sort of let their fists do their talking and all that kind of stuff. But we we're talking about this weird combination of this pocket uh, in the East Coast where the guys are blue collar and w- smart and progressive and racist and angry. And it's like a weird combo. And I said to him, Listen, uh, here's all you need to know about that group. And, and it's sort of like Ben Affleck seems trapped, you know, like and on the other hand, because I would say to him all, I would say all the time, when he's going to one of J-Lo's horrible movies or she's made a, another music video called I'm Here Now, This Is Me, Get Used To It or something. And he's trying to do real work, you know, like he's actually trying to do art trying to make real films and she's making a bunch of fluff outer space junk where she shakes her ass in outer space, you know, he he can't, he has to go with her and be like, this, how can he be supportive? He has to think it's junk. (laughs) He has to, you you know what I'm saying? Like if, if Elvis Costello started dating Paul Abdul and then it was like, Elvis, come to the concert. (laughs) And he's like, okay. I lip synced the whole thing, but I'm a great musician. He's like, you don't play anything. (laughs) Like, he would not, he'd have to pretend that he liked it, right? Right, yes. Ben Affleck (laughs) had to pretend that he liked J-Lo's horrible music and all her self-aggrandizing videos and her movie plans and all the junk that she does, right? Of course, Because he aspires to, you know, he wants to do Quentin Tarantino-like stuff or like you know real real art and she's doing sort of pop junk right but he's angry right now it's that it's from where he's from if he was from laguna beach he'd just be a happy good looking dude Hmm. who was happy just to get laid have fun and do whatever he can't because where he's from he has to just come here now he's got all the lavish lifestyle and the $60 million house and stuff. But, she, you know, J-Lo goes to bed at 930 at night because she's got the Pilates <laughs> guy coming at 6 a.m. And he's just eating a donut. No, he's smoking through a donut on, on the <laughs> yeah. patio at like 1230 at night, just wanting to drink bad. You, you know what I mean? Angry. I don't. I think what you talk about here is what you're getting at here is. It is fascinating that people cannot move by their, could not move around if it's a negative thing, that even if you make it big, that you don't leave that behind. That you'll, if you're an angsty soul, is an angsty soul, even if he's worth $500 million, right? That's the bottom yeah, line. Yeah, I think somebody, as I recall, Mike was regaling me with this, but I, at the Super Bowl at Kimmel's house, the Pats came back and won. Somebody took a picture, Dickey. Somebody took a picture of all of us at the Super Bowl, you know, and then Dickey from the Boston's like sent it to a friend of his from Boston. You know, hey, it's been a Super Bowl. Pats win last second, you know, uh, the big play, you know. With the the David Tyree catch. Uh, no, not the Tyree catch. The Plexico touchdown? No, when they beat Seattle. When they're down on the oh, one. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Malcolm Butler. Yeah, the, yeah Malcolm right. Butler. So, yeah, close the window. I mean, you know, they're going to hand it off to Marshawn and the game's going to be over, right. but they do a quick yeah. in, in route and whatever. And then someone handed the, someone took the picture at some point, and tweeted it. I put something. And of course, Ben was, no one else cared, you know, but Ben had to make a, a oh, thing, really? a thing out of it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. So, you know, innocent, whatever, who cares, you know, but there had, to, it had to be a thing because, mm-hmm. because there's something going on. And I said, look, I know this because when I was with Shaq watching my Rams from a hotel room lose <laughs> to the I Patriots. I stayed at the game. But for the, for the first home. time. First half year. For the first time, they won their first Super Bowl. And all the Patriots fans were not out celebrating. They were looking for guys with Rams jerseys <laughs> to, to try to attack them verbally. And I thought, your form of celebration is attacking 
of a vanquished fan, a disappointed fan from the other side. And I thought that's a mindset because there is two mindsets when you win. One is celebrate. The others go rub it in the face of the (laughs) other guys. And they all wanted to rub it in the face of the other guys, which shows like a mindset of someone who's from that region. You are absolutely right about that. And we just talked about Jason Tatum, the star, Jalen Brown, the other big star of the Celtics. Jason Tatum, seven years in the league. He's now 26 years old, multiple all-NBA guy, was an MVP, candidate at least. Um, You know, worth millions and millions and millions of dollars. Again, like I say, 26 years old. But a lot, it's a pressure cooker. You know, you're the main guy. We're supposed to win a title and all that. I get that pressure. But isn't it kind of relative? Don't you go off when you leave the arena into a place of like, boy, I beat life, kind of. I don't care what that schnook fan thinks. And yet, Jason Tatum, in the moments after the game and then, the you know, in the post game and like on and on, it is entirely about like, can't can't uh, attack me now, you know? Like, it's been a roller coaster to get to this point, but what are you going to say now? Like, I guess, guess all the haters got to get in line. Like, that's your reaction is to give the win to the haters, to let them know you're thinking of them in mm. what's supposed to be your moment of pure euphoria? I think that's a weird instinct. <laughs> yeah. For real. If, if your first thought is, ha-ha, take that, people who didn't believe in me, and believe me, that's part of who I am. If I ever win the Academy Award, or when I win it, I should say, I am going to devote my time. I I was like, I'll call everybody who actually matters to me and give you a sincere thanks later on. Right now, I want to list off all the people who didn't believe in me. I will do that. At the same time, I'm I'm not Jason. I think it's a really weird if you're Ben Affleck that you don't feel at the end. uh, uh, The accumulation of your 50 years isn't like, what a life I've had, eh? Just seems like he's just like the weight of the world is always on that guy's shoulders. That's weird. I do, but to be fair to him, you've experienced zero success. That's and what I'm you, saying! If you had a modicum of success, <laughs> a pinch or a dusting of success, you might look at it differently as well. I'm not trying <laughs> to be negative. I know what it's like to be That's right. what I'm saying. You walked here, right? When's it my turn? <laughs> That's, That's what, what I'm saying. asking. When's it my turn? No, they got to... Warhol made me a promise. They got to sell their $60 million home, and the scary part is the mansion tax in L.A. just passed like nine months ago. And if you're selling, you're going 5% on $60 million. I, hey, I have to bring this up to you about Boston sports quickly. Mm. Two football-related things. One, side note, football practice has started in June for my high school boy, Jean-Claude Van Damaschek. First practice yesterday, threw up. What do you well, think you of that? high school football, did you say, or basketball? Football. Oh, football. Good. What do you think of that? Is wait, that wait, wait, all wait. balls or JV that he threw Throwing up on up the first practice. day of practice? Uh, is he going to a public school? No. Well, so it's not real football. <laughs> is it <laughs> almost full, went to NoHo? Is it full contact? You yeah. know, pads and everything. I mean, yeah, they, you know what they do in the twenty. They do that shell. That oh, they do the shell at the high school thing. level. All yeah. right, good for him. Uh, I kind of like the throwing up. It, I, it never happened to me in all the weird two days and stuff. I never had any fluid in my body because I thought water was bad and they just ran us dry <laughs> until people fell over. So I was literally like a sponge had been left on a car hood in Nevada. That's the, <laughs> my moisture level. But uh, I do like I do like the booting because it, it shows a commitment. Uh, but it also, like I said, nobody threw up when I played, but they didn't give people water. And I think people are hydrating. I think to that's such right. A crazy. And they keep stressing you need to hydrate, which is uh, it's everything you need to know. When I played football, they thought water was bad for you. Now you get hit <laughs> over the head with hydrating. So which is it? And also we placed several people on the moon by the time I started playing football, but yet the whole water hydration part not figured out. Gatorade's been around for our entire lives. Have we not figured out the exact formula just yet to solve this (laughs) issue? Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I think what it says more than anything was in in high school basketball, Ben Losky was the captain of the team. He was the point guard. He was my peer. And he would throw up on the first practice or two when we'd have to run those... Uh, Jingle jangles or the, Whatever you call them, whatever. whatever. And I would not. And I think that tells you everything you need to know. Like, I had the discipline to yes. rein it in. Like, oh, you could work hard. You could really push yourself here, Dave. But why? You might throw up as a result. You know, get into jog mode here. 
Ben Losky pushing himself. Push up. What's his Starting. reward? Throwing up in a in a, in a garbage can. Yeah, like look, a bum. Look no, at thank him now, you. Super high power. Next attorney. thing, quickly. The other thing I wanted to say, and then <laughs> turn it over to Donovan. But Please. What do you make of Bill Bel- Bill Belichick? You That's think- actually what I have here. Oh, you have it. Then. Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear anything about. Bill oh, Bell. you didn't. Okay. Well, then I, I some, I yeah. It. So we have some NFL rumors circling Not a rumor. Boston sports. I mean, Bill Belichick, seventy-two, reportedly dating twenty-four-year-old former cheerleader Jordan Hudson. Mm. So what happened was, uh, so Hudson, a cheerleader at Bridgewater State University. Do you think he's circumcised? <laughs> you know, I didn't, I haven't thought about it. But, you know, I'll tell you why I bring this up. <laughs> I can't wait to hear the reason why you brought that up. Because <laughs> he's an old enough guy. Sometimes older guys aren't cut. Right. You know, and they're uncut. So imagine seeing a picture of Bill Belichick dong out. Naked, with the foreskin drooping down, oh, and no. then looking up and seeing that he took his hoodie and he cut the sleeves off. Uh. <laughs> and you should be looking at all that extra foreskin down there, you know, and then looking back up, but no sleeve, you know what I mean? So you are kind of cut, you know what I mean? Like Speaking you, of consistency, that's one a, thing's the to whole consistent. episode has been yeah. about consistency, right? Yeah, that's you cut off your sleeves, but not your wiener. Yeah. <laughs> that looks like my old uh, mechanic assistant, Rob, up, up there. Oh, that, does. that shot of him on the, the so, boat. So what happened was in 2021, they were on a flight together from Boston to Florida. They sat next to each other, and uh, he autographed her textbook. Mm. And inside he wrote, Jordan, thanks for giving me a course in logic, safe travels. But they also exchanged numbers and have remained in contact over the years. Bill Belichick just Yeah, uh, that's is, fine. Yeah, if, if, they, if they have to girlfriend. autograph it with a crayon, though, that means they're too young. That's, That's kind of my rule. <laughs> I've been burned. That you way. have no thoughts on this? I love it. I, she, now She considers herself, so she's a former competitive cheerleader. She considers herself a philosopher, an entrepreneur, <laughs> and an avid bird, birder, I guess, which means bird watcher. Uh-huh. Um, can, will this last? No. What I mean, it can. Wrong? How can you be a bird watcher and a competitive cheerleader? Because those are two different things. <laughs> and a philosopher. <laughs> you, you, you stand underneath the tree and go, here we come, a trucking in. The birds are all just going to scatter, right. you know. <laughs> or you, them away. you start that, we got the spirit, yes, we do, you know, and then you point at the tree. How about you? It's weird. It's a very loud sport and a very silent activity. Look, it, he didn't leave his wife for her, right? Like, I want to know. No, I, he had a longtime girlfriend yeah, that I think they girl. split I was never at some married, point in the huh? last year or two. Yeah. yeah, and I'm all for it. I I think the thing that we do, though, as a society is this turns into like, oh, an old man. This is what he does. A 24-year-old girl, he goes out to a 24. Isn't it? I mean, she's a grown-up. Mm-hmm. Goes for an, I mean, like, he is a. You know, shriveled up old man, for goodness sakes, right? I know he's rich and everything. I, I don't know. I find Bella, I find Belichick to be, like, seems pretty virile for a man in his 70s. Uh, it seems, you know, he did good at the roast, uh, the Brady roast. He was funny at, I don't know, I mean, maybe there's a 2.0 Belichick, you know. Maybe he is going to be the white head football coach to George Foreman's second coming. I think that's it. I think that may well be the case. I think it's funny that the the OG of that effect is as far as I know is John Madden. When I was growing up my, my old man and uncles hated the Raiders and they hated John Madden. They went, "Oh, he's the worst ever." And then like 3 years later, he was the most beloved figure ever in football when he yeah. went to the broadcast booth. And we've seen this a number of times now. Mm-hmm. Say Bill Walton like was like Bill Walton and then everybody was the the most beloved uh, hippie guy in the history of people. And I think Belichick has a chance to, and Nick Saban too. Both those yeah. guys seem like curmudgeons. Maybe yeah. they'll turn out to be the lights laying down with a twenty four year old. She uh, also right. she previously was a henna tattoo artist. <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> she's rangy. Yeah, henna I'm, tattoo means you don't have that much confidence, right? Right, like this will wear off on your fifth bath. Right. Yeah. As opposed to days. for forever, because I wouldn't have enough confidence to do a for forever tattoo. Right. All right. I like her. She's been pretty skilled. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's, and another uh, football rumor is former Alabama linebacker Terrell Lewis, who is mm. now on the Eagles. He was accused of not paying money to 
OnlyFans model Mia Mercy on Saturday. So the influencer posted a video allegedly showing the NFL star running away from his hotel room. Uh, Mia, who goes by the username oh Cybergirl Mia, sees him running and starts chasing after him in the hallway naked. So he was with two uh, two women. They had uh, all three of them had consensual sex, and then instead of paying, he sprints out of there. And she posts on Twitter that it was him, and he ran out. And now all of his social media has been put to private. <laughs> <laughs> this is some video. Yeah. It, it's it's one of the few videos where you really couldn't say for sure who this is. He's got the hood up, right? Oh my god! Do we hear him talk? No, it's just this quick video. No, no denying from his camp, oh but also no confirming. She um, they said he naked. does look he does look like he's running with a little bit of an injury. Mm. <laughs> uh, but I'm sorry. Did you say these were hookers? Yes. I mean, I assume they're hookers, but why would you post the video if you're a hooker? Well, they're OnlyFans models, too, but they said they had consensual sex that required payment, so. Well, first off, uh, running out on on hookers, it's like, tr- it's like you see in L.A., it's like, I got a cop behind me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a run for the border. It's like, it's not going to work. It's impossible. <laughs> There's helicopters. You can't outrun a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll take my chances against two hookers versus Johnny Law, though, if I had to choose. But what, what I'm saying is, is they're going to drop a dime on you. You have to pay in full. You know what I mean? And and, re- and what kind of tab could we really be talking about? Like max, a couple grand, like twenty two hundred dollars. I mean, what is it? What does it cost? I also <laughs> the the chasing after you once they catch. The NFL linebacker, where they do, do hold do? him by his ankles yeah. and shake him until the cash <laughs> like fall. What, what are you going to do? You're going to call the cops? You just got done whoring off with the guy. Well, the video cuts off as he gets close to the elevators, and she's right on his heels there. Does he take the mm. stairs down? or does no. she, or do- I, I saw the rest of the video. Oh, you did? Oh. Yeah, there's another, there's a second part of it, like from a different, from a hotel mounted camera. They make love once again. P. Diddy pops out <laughs> in a towel and punches the chick right in the face. And then he goes quietly down the elevator with that guy. You didn't see the second part? I missed that one. And P. Diddy's wearing a towel and yeah. he just pops right out of a Tracks. doorway and he punches her. He knocked her down. He kicked her once. What? He dragged her by her hair a little bit. And then they got in the elevator. And they where'd, went the, away. where'd the nude hooker go, though? Like, where, where did she take this? Into the lobby? Out into the streets? You gotta take it into the... Here's the deal, too. The chick who ran out the hotel door, right? All right. We know the lead hooker doesn't have her key card. Unless... <laughs> unless... I mean, there's... Unless, <laughs> yes, unless <laughs> it's unless she's got a chip reader. <laughs> I nailed that one right in a chip reader. She could have it in the chip reader, but I'm just you can't run that fast with a with a Visa card or with a with a key card, card key yeah. card. All right, so that she would doesn't. be nice if you were a hooker and you could swipe. Yeah, you know? the next girl is doing what? I got to see this again because I don't think she she's dressed right or is she dressed? We don't know. Oh my God. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know. But she runs out. I would say not dressed because she's walking kind of weird. Oh, she stood in the door, though. She didn't let yeah. the door close. Okay. Yeah, there's All some, right. It's weird motion. Yeah. Also, funny like that at the ankle side note that if he's the one who um, reserved the room, he got, uh, he got two queen beds, not one big king for the three of them. Oh, huh. I didn't think about that. For sure. I don't know where this was, but I was definitely the next person to go come into the room. <laughs> <laughs> they had a late checkout. I remember it was four, and then I just came in right right after that because that's definitely going on in every room I go into before, right? <laughs> Crazed hookers. Well, it on with NFL it'll definitely guys. be in your head yeah. the next for the next three years you check into any hotel. Right. <laughs> this is definitely what happened. I can smell the ghost of this threesome. <laughs> All right. Well, that's good. Yeah. Oh, you got to pay. You got to pay the hookers. Well, anyway, um, so federal apparently pros- you don't. In, in other news, federal prosecutors have charged two men with running a dark web marketplace that allowed customers to purchase counterfeit money and other illegal goods, including drugs and stolen credit card information worth over four hundred thirty million dollars. Mm. Yeah, Thomas Pavey, also known <laughs> as Dope Nugget. 
<laughs> 38 uh, from Florida. And Raheem Hamilton, also known as Zero Angel, age 28. They own and operate this market from 2018 to 2020. And yeah, in it you had menus that uh, you can click on if you want f- to have some fraud, drugs and chemicals, counterfeit items, software and malware, um, subcategories. You get cocaine, heroin, morphine, meth, and um, yeah. And so they in the seizure they they uh, were able to get cryptocurrency valued at seventy five million dollars at the time, also cash and precious metals. Mm. That's so, where all that copper's going on yeah. from the Sixth Street Bridge. Um, we can find. I, I don't know anything about the dark web. I don't want to know anything about the dark web. This whole world where it's like, oh yeah, you want to eat gri- gri- gorilla meat? Yeah, we can do that. You know, and I'm like, but why? And I think a lot of it is to say I did it, and other people can't do sure, it because I don't like gorilla do meat. I don't think I would. I'm satisfied with you know cows and pigs and chickens and stuff. Yeah. It just seems it, – it, it, it seems like a handicap to be attracted to that world. You know? You know what I mean? Like, like it it's, just – You know what it feels like to me a little bit is the Charlie Sheen – we're talking about hookers and everything. But, like, why would Charlie Sheen, who was so successful and worth so much money, why would he be into so much dark stuff because – the vaguely normal stuff no longer gets it for him anymore. Yeah, I'm saying you don't need to be with an underage chick. You can be with Belichick's girlfriend. That, I hear she's you. 24, but, but that you whole know? movie, The Freshman. Yeah, I'm sure you saw that at some point with Brando and um, mm-hmm. uh, Matthew Broderick. I think it's a really great picture. But yeah, that's one of the plot points. Is that, yeah, we can just take all these people who, who don't know what to do with all the money they have and claim that we're serving them a Komodo dragon and they'll pay whatever we ask for it because it'll be something that'll be distinct among their fancy friends to claim that they did, right? Yeah, it's just there's an attraction. <clears throat> there's there's like there's two parts. There's two components to sex. There's the component that feels good that people like, and then there's a component that feels dirty and naughty and weird and you know d- degrading or something, and that's a big part of it for certain people. And if you like that component, then you're going to go down some weird places, right? But if you just like the component where it's like, yeah, it feels good, I like it, then you'll be okay. And I feel like this is the component of people that like dirty for dirty and weird for weird. And if you have that gene, it's going to be a weird, tough life because it's only going to move your needle if it is sort of illegal, nefarious, or somebody gets hurt, or or you potentially are facing prison time. Like there needs to be consequences, you know. And it's it's just a, you know, it's like sometimes when you talk to people, they'll just go like. Uh, Joe Prano over here in the back. I'll just go, yeah, my brother's a criminal. And I'll go, he likes it. You know what I mean? He likes doing these things. It, it Like it feels, it, he doesn't like the way it feels just to have like a regular job and pay taxes and stuff. It's like, it's not so much about criminal behavior. It's like, I like the feeling of, of do, right. doing something. The feeling, that, uh, you gotta try, like, uh, you, you don't want to endanger yourself and other people, but on the other hand, you, as I always say, you don't want to merely survive, you want to live. And if living, if the feeling of, uh, of pleasure is something dark like that, I don't know what you'd do. That would, that, that would be well, a, uh, the time you really feel most alive is when you're being chased by a whore. <laughs> <laughs> I know your grandpa said it many times, but I mean, that guy was alive when that naked woman was chasing him down the hall. Like, you haven't lived till a noodle horse chased you down the hall. That's right. Wow. What is the name? All right, so this guy's name, what's this guy's? Terrell Lewis. Yeah, but what's his handle? Sorry. No, I'm talking about the guy who started the dark web. Oh, Dope Nugget. Dope Nugget. All right, that's a good name. But the name, Dawson, of the guy... Byron's got the clip somewhere there. Uh, our favorite Nithya Raman was uh, helping the gays out by tearing oh, down yeah. the U-turn sign. That guy had a great, a great name. Now, I assume mm-hmm. he changed his name to it, but you'll we you'll find report. you'll find the news report. That yeah, guy had a you yesterday, Byron. That guy had a great name. All right, here it is. There it is. Let's see. That's our city council hard at work. L.A. City Council members Hugo Soto Martinez and Nithya Raman were on hand today to help remove the signs. They say the no cruising and no U-turn signs were put up in the 1990s to prevent people in the gay community from meeting up with other gay people. 
Well, hold on. Also... Meeting up for other gay people on a street in front of people's houses who are cruising in their cars to get a blowjob in the passenger. Yeah, not not in general. Not for not meeting people generally in the gay community, but cruising in residential areas. Yes. The yes. phrasing to protect, it's very strange and, again, inconsistent is the thing that keeps coming around to me. Kyrie Irving went on an anti-Semitic thing a couple of years Love ago. That guy. You know, he... he, he uh, yes. Oh, you... You approve of that kind of uh, thing. There are other things he did, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. No, so he ran himself out of every NBA town he was ever in. Then in the last couple of months, he is a man of peace, and he's yep. the leader of the Mavericks. And it's like the Boston fans, they, they explain it in such a way that the Boston fans are being petulant in some reason. And like Kyrie has matured. He's a leader <laughs> of this team. It's like... You're allowed to mention why the why the Boston fans hate him so yes, much. Yes, agreed. Why people resent him. If, if if you're Jewish, you would not like someone who's anti-Semitic. And and but for some reason, it's Kyrie that has to be vaguely protected. In that it's a sort of like this. Like you're allowed to say the reasons why. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. The, He's a David. Not an attack on anybody that they don't want you having sex in public. Well, all right, so we'll keep playing. But here's what I'm saying. If you lived with your kids in this residential right. neighborhood and guys on Saturday night would cruise up and down and then you turn and then cruise up and down to pick up gay dudes walking, cruising on the sidewalk, then yes, you would say to the city council, uh, maybe we could do something about these guys cruising, but it's an anti-gay right. thing. All right. Sorry. Play it. Sorry. I was also surprised that these um, <clears throat> these U-turn signs were still uh, up. And at first, you know, they seem a little, um, oh, okay, it's just a no U-turn sign. All right, sign. But this when you is learn a the dude history- who's a Silver Lake City Council whose name is Maybe a Girl. Maybe a Girl. Maybe a Girl who's uh, setting policy over there in Silver Lake. So, again, we, don't have, we don't have problems. <laughs> we don't have homeless everywhere and garbage everywhere. Uh, and failing school systems where we got Nithya Raman tearing down U-turn signs, and it's a big victory for the gay community. I was so, excited to see her in the news again. I was nice, yeah. She's the one I tacked relentlessly because she may have said one of the, maybe one of the dumbest things I've ever heard come out of a Who human being's it? mouth. It's it, a councilwoman It's a in councilwoman LA. in L.A. Who was addressing they're trying to figure out what to do with the the stealing of the catalytic converters and everyone getting their chris got his stolen and everyone has uh they're stolen and if we ever show this clip we got to lop off the first 10 seconds or something we we don't we don't have it we right did. oh you did oh good mm. uh oh just because it bears repeating so when she's not tearing down u-turn signs in gay neighborhoods and applauding herself with uh, he may be a she, then uh, she's explaining the reason why the catalytic converters are getting stolen and, and who's to blame, essentially. All right, so Dave, you can take a guess uh, as to who's to blame, but here's... If it's he, Chris, I, uh, then I'm all well, for it. it's <laughs> kind of his fault in a roundabout way, but here it is. Right. In this case, I think one of the things that really infuriates me is that we have a company, a t- you know, the pre whatever, Toyota, who makes the Prius, um, that essentially has a device on their cars, which is super easy to remove. It's basically the value of a MacBook, right? That is put in a place that is incredibly easy to access in your car. And then the yeah. thefts related to this issue have essentially all, right. all of the cost. So it's Toyota. Who's to blame for <laughs> welding? This canister, the underside of your car. At your next Apple, creating those uh, those laptops. Yeah, super easy, <laughs> they're, right? They're, they're, they're light, light, easy enough to carry around. I could fit a ton of those in my I trunk. I tried to move mine from the den to the living room the other day. It only took one guy to help me. Oh. It was easy. He just jacked up the sofa, and then I slid <laughs> under the sofa, and I got my Sawzall out, and I freed it up. And I was able to move with my laptop into the next room. Yeah. So that's the message I can say to you, like, oh, nice looking catalytic converter you have there. Why don't you go get yourself one now? And I can take off, run down the hall. You can send all the nude whores you want after me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm allowed. John right. Law says so. Right. She's comparing it to something that is super easy to steal and does get stolen, but this thing's <laughs> welded into your car. But what's the point? I, I, it's easy to steal, so therefore you can steal it? 
<laughs> well, that's a broader, that's the bigger and the broader picture, which is she blames people for tempting these people to steal it, but they have to crawl underneath your car at three in the morning and someone holds a flashlight. Like, I, I anyway, she's clinic, she's setting policy. That's all I'm saying. So she's clinically insane. Or, or I don't know what her policy is going to be. I'm not sure how this affects the stealing problem of the catalytic converters and how it, how the process works and how it turns into legislation. Insane logic, that's right. for sure. Yes. Oh, non, 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 right. All right. So that's her. And now she's on to taking down U-turn, U-turn signs. signs and gate in the gay part of yeah. town. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so a former employee at Elon Musk's brain chip company, Neuralink, mm. has alleged that she was scratched by monkeys infected with herpes and then fired after she became pregnant. Two separate things. Mm-hmm. Um, so her name's Lindsay. So she started working at Neuralink as an animal care specialist mm. and accused the former company for failing to provide adequate protective gear while she was exposed to the animals. So she was scratched in the arm and in the face by monkeys that were positive uh, for herpes. And mm. then she said that she was, get, she was getting pregnant as well. Um, and her bosses thought that they would accommodate Well, maybe her. the monkey gave her herpes. You know. <laughs> I mean, when he was unclear. impregnating her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, are these separate things? They're separate. Oh. Yeah, but, but she's not been impregnated by but, a monkey. No. no. Okay. Oh, and let him answer. Yeah. <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> monkey. Pregnant. Monkey. No. Oh, okay. No. No. So yeah. I don't know why he said it that way. I, you're right. <laughs> anyway. Um, let, let's just move on. Because you're confusing everyone now. That's true. So it's the plot of Outbreak. She, it yeah, like it. she got scratched. Uh, the, the monkeys. They were studying her pedic monkeys. I'm guessing. Good indie band name. <laughs> yeah, I'd watch that. They're, Coachella. They're at Largo year. this week. <laughs> yeah. So they're pedic monkeys. I would watch, and they must be doing. You know, it's not just a coincidence they have herpes, or maybe they do. Maybe they're like koala bears, and they all have herpes, or whatever the koala bear syphilis, or whatever. The, Hep C or whatever koala bears are supposed to have. So there's that. I mean, look, uh, Elon Musk has to get sued by 25 people every 10 minutes, it's right? A lot of employees. That's anyone who's ever worked there is going to sue. But what's he doing with monkeys? Well, nearly doing the is Neuralink, the oh, brain chip. chip. Oh, so they right, put a, right, right. A chip okay. in your brain, you can control a mouse and uh, mm-hmm. a computer mouse, not a, a mm. animal. And then, uh, yeah, and supposedly it's going to help with degenerative brain diseases and and things like that. Good. So, yeah, I'm all I'm all for it. And it'd be nice. You I won't mean, get it, though. No, but I mean, like like I said, I was talking on a show the other day, and like Gene Wilder, he got um, Alzheimer's, and he got real dementia. bad at the end, and dementia, and it's just kind of, you know, Gene Wilder's such, such a vivid, vibrant character, right. with such a great artist and imagination and stuff. Like, yeah, that guy could get a chip put in when this thing started to take over his brain. Yeah, that'd be nice. Get a few more movies out of him and some paintings and, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. There is a, uh, I don't know if we were talking about it, but when you're talking about controlling a mouse, but not a real mouse, but a you know, keyboard or screen, I was um, thinking about, there was a great, I haven't brought it up in a while, but Killer Bees, Killer Bees, look up Dawson. It was like a, <laughs> It, they used to have these great movies of the week that we used to talk about, like Killdozer. It's like a, kill, a, a bulldozer is possessed right. by an alien force and now it's taken over. A cons- you know, Robert Yurick is the foreman. You know, it's like a lot of that. <laughs> and there's a lot of like James Brolin and trapped. He's trapped overnight in a department store with killer Dobermans running around the departments. So there's, there's whole movies. And they got crazier and crazier. But one was Killer Bees. And the, the slug line, I think it was for Killer Bees, was like Olivia de Havilland. That's the other thing, too, is stars from the Big 30s time. and the 40s right. would ride out their career in the 70s making these schlocky TV movies. No more big, you know, Paramount, big screen, you know, big money movies. They're just doing sitcoms and game shows. And it's like Olivia de Havilland um, has has dominion over a hive of killer bees. And she would literally like sit on her front porch and make a, a squint on her face and the bees would go after her neighbor and stuff like that. Like she controlled the bees with her mind. That's a that's a skill. Yeah. I'd like to have that skill. The slug, the slug line 
it was killer bees, I'm almost sure. And there was a slug line. But anyway, Dawson, you can just look up movies of the week and uh, killer bees. And I know you couldn't do this. Oh, oh, 74. There you go. Is it there? Yeah. Made for television horror film. Dominion over the killer bees. Uh, what's it say? Who stars? I'm looking for the poster. Oh. oh it's Gloria not- Swanson. Gloria Swanson. Mm. Gloria Swanson is a huge star of the silver screen and the 30s and the 40s and then ends up just controlling bees in a <laughs> C movie, you know, made for TV movie. Yeah. You know, they made movies that either went to a movie theater or they were made for TV movies. It wasn't like a lot of make the movie and see if it gets picked up on a streamer or right. get released in a theater. It was like these made for TV movies was low down on, on the barrel. All right, let's see if... Uh, so this is Gloria Swanson. Eddie Albert and Kate Jackson taking a break from Charlie's Angels. Oh, that's right. And she she's making, Gloria Swanson's making her television debut because she made movies. And right. She's slumming it now. What's it say? She, she can, The logline is, she controls the bees. They'll kill for her and die for her. She's their queen and she'll live forever. Kill yeah. bees. Gloria Swanson died in 1977. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> she killed herself shortly after making this movie. <laughs> you want to make Killer Bees too? <laughs> Glorious God. Nope. Send those Killer Bees over to my place and have them take me out. You know, Queen reminds me of this. This is the question I was going to ask you before, and I really do think it would be great TV, but you would never be able to do this because animal rights people rightly would step in. But in a world in which they do that thing where they control, like, we're going to send the beast out and you can shoot it and feel like you're a hunter, why can't we do this? I feel like if there were road games in animal fights, I think, like, if you could take a bear, a grizzly bear. You say road games? Road games, you know. In like animal it, fights. Yeah, if you have a home field advantage, like you're supposed to win in sports. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I feel like king of the jungle. No, I got we the just road accept, game. I know, we I get the, the whole, we, we do the whole like lion's king of the jungle. I wonder if anybody is raw about that at the jungle. But what if you put the bear in the jungle, road game, would he take over the mm-hmm. throne? Does, mm-hmm. he, does he defeat the lion and become the king? I say he would. And I think, and this is a different conversation, I feel like the elephant would beat both of them. But nobody likes to talk about an elephant in fights like that. He's a, he's a man mm. of peace, generally, mm-hmm. I feel like. But right, wouldn't a bear... What, I mean, if you have to fight, if you have to encounter one, you want to encounter a... Like, if you put a lion at the farm, he would rule the farm pretty quickly. Because the swine and who are the sheep, they would be like, we don't have a chance at this guy. Mm-hmm. Bear walks into the jungle, they would be like, well, now wait a second. Sorry, lion. You know, mm-hmm. but the bear is going to kick your ass, but good. Right? I think a Kodiak bear, grizzly bear, yeah. Would he probably, would rule. I, I, think, I think he would, but you have to kind of do the size math because with the, with the cats. Because as I was, I was I thinking the other day, you know, a, a tabby, like an 11-pound, 9-, 10-pound cat, domestic house cat, what, if they freak out, they jump on your head or whatever, they can jack you up sure. at 10 pounds. And then the 90-pound version of that, which is basically the mountain lion, the, I don't know, it's a bobcat, it's a mountain lion. They're, all, a, they're a lot rangy species, cats. Right, right. But but uh, but an 80-, 90-pound version of that house cat will, bobcat ki- or a lynx. will kill you. Well, a lynx won't kill you. It won't. I don't think a lynx will kill you, but a mountain lion will. Yeah. But a mountain lion is 110 pounds or something. I don't know how big they get, but they're here. They, they want, and they kill people on occasion, you know, hikers and stuff like uh-huh. that. So now you go, well, the, the 10 pound version will jack you up, and the 80 pound version will kill you. And then a Bengal tiger is 670 pounds. You know what I mean? So now picture a 670 pound house cat. That's pretty tough. Now you go, the bear weighs 1,300. Bounding after you. The, yes, the bear weighs 1,300. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto parts. Well, in the business of keeping your car on the road, that's what they do. Friendly, helpful service and parts and all the knowledge you need. I love these guys. I've always, even before I they became a sponsor, a million years, I mean, back when I was 
renting a house up in La Crescenta. I'd always go to O'Reilly up there on Foothill Boulevard. Still there. Just passed there the other day. Always get my stuff from O'Reilly. Thousands of parts and accessories in stock, either in-store or online. Check uh, engine light. Is that on? Well, don't ignore it. O'Reilly VersaScan is a free diagnostic service that provides a detailed, easy-to-read report. Need wipers replaced or a brake light fix? They can help you find the right part or point you in the nearest repair shop so you can get it done that way. And they'll also test your battery for free in or out of the car. Talk to the professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts today or visit O'ReillyAuto.com slash Adam. That's O'ReillyAuto.com slash Adam. Cook Unity. We all have local restaurants we wish we could have at home. Yes, it's true. You'd like that. I'd like to go to your local place, but uh, it'd be nice if you could just eat that standard of food at your home. Well, that's where Cook Unity comes in. First, chef to you service delivering locally sourced meals to your door every week, cheaper than delivery. Oh, what I have last? Uh, jambalaya pasta and creamy creole sauce with shrimp, chicken, and sausage. It was so good. Think about that jambalaya pasta, chicken, sausage, shrimp, creole sauce. Mm. So, and you also know, uh, I hate to waste food. So Cook Unity arrives in compostable containers, recyclable containers, or reusable packaging, and it keeps fresh in the fridge, up to seven days. And Cook Unity is a chef collective. So every meal is handcrafted, made in a local micro kitchen, hundreds of dishes to choose from, and the menu's updated constantly. So do what I do. Cook Unity. Right, Dawson? Experience chef-quality meals every week delivered right to your door. Go to cookunity.com slash Adam or enter code Adam before checkout for 50% off your first week. That's 50% off your first week by using code Adam or going to cookunity.com slash Adam. As we venture into our 15th year of podcasting, here's another memorable moment from the Adam Carolla Show's Ace Awards Archives. (laughs) You've paid your dues and scored lots of goals up in Winnipeg where it often snows. You played for the Ducks in Anaheim. I missed the part, but Disney's a good time. Cruising Clash, 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 Clash. You're in the Hall of Fame, Tamu. So I made this nice song. For some new memorable moments, let's get back to the Adam Carolla Show. All right, Sheck is here, and Chris Loxamana has uh, some information to share. Uh, it is with a heavy heart that I shall announce. Uh, this is my last Adam Carolla Show. And why is that? Um, I am going to be moving. I got a, a job offer with a, a fantastic music company called Yamaha. Yes, very big. Very big music instrument company. So I'll be working with them, producing some of their stuff. And um, yeah, I, I, so, I Chris, started here in 2010, and it's uh, it's been a long time. And uh, I just appreciate being here. Thanks to everybody for... It was it, It's a good place. You know, I, I tell people all the time, and they go, oh, you do three podcasts in a day or something. I go, well, look, everyone has to work, right? So if you have to work... And let's just assume you have to work. If you come from where we all come from, then you have to work. So now, considering you have to work, then we'll compare this to many other jobs. Roofing, working at the Home Depot, driving Uber, working at a Unami burger, or whatever (laughs) it is. Uh, Chasing football players who won't pay you. That's right. After coitus. That's right. Yeah. Uh, 
I wonder if the linebacker coach sees that and sees that <laughs> she's actually pacing him I, <laughs> and going, this guy's lost a step on his 40. I know. Terrell cannot cover fast tight ends. Yeah, so I'd say this is better than a job. It may not be a dream job, but it's better than any job we grew up thinking about having, right? And uh, be, I mean, when people say beyond what you can imagine, this is in fact literally that, obviously podcasting, but the idea that I'm sure Chris Loxamana growing up, now he's, you started on this show when you were minus seven years old. What are you now, 14 years ago that was? <laughs> 14 like, years ago, yeah. Sheesh. Um, but yes, Ace, the, you know, I'm not, the, the, not genuflecting to you, but you know. For real, what you've built here over the last fifteen years, what a what a delight! If you know Donovan's going to move on and do whatever else, but that this is a chapter of anybody's life is, uh, you know, before you talk about money or anything else, what a delight! This is living, not surviving. This wow, is when this most is people are there doing their accounting thing in their cubicle or whatever people do, and they're listening to you and Donovan talk. That's cheating life from this side of things. I agree. And moving on to maybe the something you're most passionate about, which is music. Yeah. yeah. Which uh, I'm happy about. So, um, yeah, I, actually, I wrote something down. If I, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, we yeah. got 20 minutes worth of video. Yeah, so, instead, so just so I don't forget. <laughs> oh, it's anything. comedians and staff. So this is oh, com- compiled. Okay. So, um, all right. So I was a college student with no direction when I started here in 2010. Mm-hmm. But uh, since then, you've watched me achieve some of life's biggest milestones. True. As I became the man I am now, I'm, I got married. Mm-hmm. I had a kid. Mm-hmm. I watched Adam win the Toyota Celebrity Grand Prix twice with back-to-back wins, one as a celebrity and one as a pro. I don't remember that, but I remember the time I told you that the, that the camera mounted on the dash was coming loose. Yeah. And then you said, I'll get a bunch of duct tape and stick it down real good. Uh-huh. And then the race started, and the camera popped off, landed in my lap, and then rolled down in between the pedals. <laughs> and, then, and it annoyed me the entire race. But I don't remember the winning actual part. But oh. keep, going. keep um, going. And after working alongside Adam all these years, I've learned some very valuable lessons. Mm. Uh, you don't have to prepare. You don't have to be educated. You get to leave early. <laughs> You There's can never be fired. Love line, but you, go ahead. you can never be fired, and it's all about luck and who you know. Yes. Um, there's too many people to thank, but my deepest gratitude goes to everyone who took part in this wonderful journey with me. And uh, thank you to the people here now: Dawson, Lynch, August, Chaffee, uh, basically everyone named Mike. Mm-hmm. Um, the rest of the staff who made my life a lot easier: Byron, Emmy. Rudy, of course, super fan Giovanni, mm. uh, Dave Damashek, and not just because he's in the room right now. Mm. Um, and, and cheers to the to the new blood here, Joe, Kyle, and Aaron. Mm-hmm. Good luck, and I suggest you learn the studio bathroom rules ASAP. Oh yeah. I'd also like to thank all the incredible guests of the show, whom I've had the opportunity to meet and collaborate with. It's not lost on me how lucky I am, uh, and to the fans of this show, the listeners. It's been my greatest privilege to have worked on something that would hopefully make your day better. Being able to connect with you, whether directly or indirectly, is the best part of the job. We do this show for you, and it's because of you that we get to keep doing it. So in a way, this is basically the FUBU of podcasts. And, of course, Adam Carolla. Hmm. There's just way too much to say, but the thing I want to say most is thank you. Wait, wait. Thank you for Hold taking on. me what on this, this ride with you, for showing me new ways oh, to uh, think Dawson's and a look oh, at things from the past, for not finding every beer cap I bought in the studio. But mostly, thank you for the Unas opportunity noches. of a lifetime. <laughs> it has been an absolute honor y working otras on the show with you, and contigo. I can't wait to see what happens next. Unas veces I am so appreciative of you, amor. proud of you. All right, we get the joke. Yeah, ranchero music is how they need to play people off. <laughs> so they do it with classical music, and the bitch goes off about prattles on her kid for another ten There's minutes. There's a light of fire under them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tuba, ranchera gets it going. Well, should we should we look at these videos? I'm I'm worried they're going to be very long, but I think Let's we see. should look at them. Uh, okay. Anyway. Hey, Chris, it's Orny Adams. Listen, 
I was really bummed to hear you're leaving the Adam Carolla show. You made the show much better. Don't you ever forget that. You certainly made my appearances much better. And I thank you for that. And I've enjoyed working alongside you and Adam cleaning his reading glasses over and over again. And you'll be missed. And wherever you end up, I wish you the best of success. And I hope they have better camera angles and lighting <laughs> than this show. Go kill it, man. Whether it's your music or another podcast, I'm rooting for you. Thanks, Marty. Hey, Chris. Oh. I hear you're leaving. I find that devastating. Kyle Dunnigan. Um, you've always been such a great uh, friend to me, helping me out with... Um, the faces and everything, and laughing at my jokes that sometimes weren't that great, but um, you generously laughed. Uh, I wish you well. Please stay in touch. Uh, you got my number, right? All right, buddy, take care. Hey, Chris, it's Emmy. Oh. I can't believe it's been seven years since we've known each other. You welcomed me into your close-knit family. You allowed me to work under you on ACS. You've taught me so much, and I am beyond grateful for that. I just want to say I wish you all the best on your new ventures. You're such a great dad with Benny. I love your music, so I'll be on the lookout for your next tour dates. Anyway, I'm going to miss you, buddy. Chris, when I first heard you were leaving, Jody Miller. Jody I thought, ugh, finally, it's about <laughs> time. Get him out of there. Now I can come and do more episodes there without seeing you. Because honestly, ever since that first time we met and you said, Hi, it's nice to meet you. I was like, whoa, this guy, what is wrong with him? Something is not right. Are you joining a cult? Is that what you're doing? Hopefully, if you are joining a cult, they will let you out and let us know how you're doing in life. I wish you all the best. Chris, uh, what can I say? You shall Dr. be missed. Drew. Despite what Mr. Corolla says. No, I'm, kid I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Yeah, you will be missed, uh, mostly. Uh, I'll carry with you, me all the uh, memories of the good time, the great work you've done, the uh, musicianship that I witnessed, and the fact that I thought Max Apata was actually your last name, uh, a moment that I shall never live down. So uh, we're always here, and don't be a stranger. Love hey, you. Chris. Uh, I heard you're moving on, and I just wanted Jonathan to say good Kai. luck. Um, I'm really going to miss you, man. Uh, I'm going to miss so much about you. I'm going to miss, you know, huffing paint. <laughs> In the parking lot of the junior high school. I'm gonna miss doing blow out of Hooker's Assholes in Reno. And I'm gonna miss you, man. I'm gonna miss the friendship. Wait, this isn't Chris Miller? Who? Oh, Chris Loxamod, right, from Adam Carolla, right? Hey, Chris! It's Jonathan Kite from Adam Carolla. Uh, good luck. <laughs> Chris, not having you on the oh. Adam Carolla show with the JV, but all our memories and the years and good times we had, all balls. This bun is for you, Chris. Oh. Hell yeah. Thanks, DFG. Chris Laxamana, hey buddy, it's Rudy Pavich. Best of luck in the next chapter of life. I just wanted to say thank you for everything. The last three years I owe to you, my friend. When we met, I was a D-level comedian slash video editor in Minneapolis. And now, because of you, I'm still a D-level comedian slash video editor in Minneapolis. But now I work for the Adam Carolla Show because you went to bat for me and I'm recording an album September 13th and 14th, Comedy Corner Underground. <laughs> Tickets are on sale right now. But we're not here to talk about that, Chris. We're here to talk about you and how goddamn great of a guy you are. Sincerely, everything you do, I know you're gonna be great at it. Best of luck. And if you want tickets for the album recording, just shoot me a line. I'll send you a link where you can buy tickets. It's the least I can do. Thank you. Well, this is... Almost Mark the end Darius. of the era. Uh, Chris, you're going to be missed immensely. Uh, you're multi-talented. Uh, I'm a fan of uh, your work in and outside of the studio. Always have been. You're going to be sorely missed. You know, it's interesting because as I tape this, I was just doing a O.J. Simpson retrospective. And I, I would almost uh, make you akin to the Cato Kalin of the uh, Corolla <laughs> Empire. So you Thank will you. be Miss Cato, but we know you'll land on your feet. Hey, Chris. Uh, you're leaving. <laughs> and uh, all I got to say is, God damn it. <laughs> Thank you for always being. I feel like the, these could have been nice done in person. Collected, by example. <laughs> Uh, uh, really showing us all how it's done. Thanks, and, Brian. And uh, never losing your composure, especially with me, uh, with all the times I've messed up. And you were totally would have been right to be mad because I'm always high. So I, I really appreciate that. And I'll, uh, I'll remember you and, and love you always. 
Hey, bud. Adam right here. Heard you're too cool for school, dude. Is that it? Is that it, bro? Oh, yeah. Okay. Look at you. Gets on the mic, becomes the sidekick, and now he's off to greener pastures. Well, good fucking luck. Good luck, dude. You're going to be great. You have brought so much to the Adam Carolla program. You have brought so much uh, enthusiasm and support, genuine, to the comedians, actors, musicians, uh, doctors that have come through the show. And, and, and lastly, I want to say that if you want to wake up with the sun and go to bed at the moon, uh, that's your prerogative. But I think TLC said it best. Uh, I don't want no scrubs. A scrub is a guy that can't get no love from me. And if I'm in the shower and I'm shaving my head and my back and my pussy and my crack, <laughs> you know we'll be right back. I love you. <laughs> and I hope you'll be back. And I'll miss you. Bye, buddy. Oh, that's nice. Oh, very nice. Very breezing nice. Thank seven. you for the wonderful video. I put it together myself. I know this is your your editing work. Thank you. Best of luck from all your friends. No. From all your family. Oh, that's nice. The Adam Carolla Show. So sweet. That was well done. That really was nicely Very, put together. Yes. I assume Dawson and company had a lot to do with that. I'll get out of the way. I, this is no. your family. The extended family is Dave's of Thunder. Feeney and I are very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you and Gary for everything you always did to help out our stupid show. Um, uh, Dawson has a cheese wheel for you. <laughs> um, and uh, late breaking, Kevin Costner wants you to come along, bring the whole family. Next oh. time Adam heads over to the ranch, you're all supposed to jump in the car with eight. I'd love I to. I'm just that. Kevin, if you're I'm listening, just, thank you. For so the that'll invite. be a that'll be a neat thing for you to spend some quality time with Ace. Yeah, Wonderful. he's coming in. Well, we were talking <clears throat> about dates, and I said, uh, "When's the movie drop?" And he said, "When does Chris leave?" <laughs> and, I, and I said, "Well, well, somewhere in between." You know what I mean? I'll say this only about uh, Donovan, my guy. We got another vid, by the way. <laughs> okay, I just want to say this, Aso, you're loud and demonstrative and uh, opinionated and everything else. I am less successfully, but you know, being a loud mouth and all that is one way to go through life. But it is. You know, so many people take that and gravitas through cynicism and loud cynicism and all that. That is the opposite of Donovan, and there's not a more substantial guy to be around than this guy, right? Uh, Chris is nice and he's effective, and yes, you know, he's a sweetheart of a guy. It's nice, but nice, I I like. He's no well, pushover, and Jen no, and that baby he's a and bit I, of what a what pushover. I but that look, I, I like e- easy. The best quality you can have is easy. It's the it's the best quality. Uh, I think rich, right? But but that's not a quality. I know I that's a place you land. But ruggedly but, handsome that but served me the, well. But yes. the best quality is easy, and I, I think people look at easy as weak sometimes, but it's really not. It's just you're not a pain in the ass. You're not constantly putting yourself first. You know, it's like we all know the person in the office. I go, oh, uh, we're going to come in Sunday and do the show Sunday night. And I go, oh, okay, so and so is going to have a problem. Like we know who that person is. Chris is easy, mm. and if you can be easy and effective, then that's your best. You know, like as big a pain in the ass as August is, he's easy. You know, whatever. So true about that guy, right? I'm easy too, and I can be a pain in the ass, but I'm easy. It's like whenever you want to leave, we'll leave. We want to eat, we'll eat. Like we'll go do what you want to do. And Chris is easy, which again, it, 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 everyone wants dynamic and bold, and and uh, you know they broke the mold with this guy. But the best quality in a relationship, especially you know in in a, in a working relationship and or marriage, is. Being easy is is the best thing I can say about somebody. Chris is easy, friendly, non moody, never mood. It really never is, had a I was mood sitting here other thinking than, about than this mood. When did I? When was Donovan the angriest or saddest or otherwise that I've ever seen him? I, I really cannot <laughs> summon a single instance of knowing him for as long as I have. Where I thought like, boy, Donovan's in a mood today. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have some best of oh, okay. for for him. That we can. Uh, I was nominated for a few uncomfortable moments in mm-hmm. my day, and it's a vid that 
again, we assembled. I don't know who gets credit for these vids. I think Aaron. Aaron was the one. Oh, okay. It, but I think Super Fan Giovanni helped them too, I bet. Oh, okay. All right. Ben Folds joining us in studio. No. <laughs> oh, that's Chris. Yeah, playing. Ben got some kind of food poisoning, couldn't make it in. It's like, ah, let's get the Asian and throw him in front of the Irish and let <laughs> him go to town. Do you feel the pressure of that? Mm-hmm. I do. I'm, I'm, I'm terrified. And... Could you play the piano while you talk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was 19 or 20. Uh huh. And some friends of mine wanted to go on a road trip. Mm -hmm. So we saw a school bus and decided to buy it. You ready for nine shows today? Well, get nine shows left. Maxopata, 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 oh, 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 Maxopata. Well, he stands no more than five foot three. This puffy head, horny, hungry Asian pygmy. Road trips with Corolla and sleeps in a drawer. Heard he's good with the ladies, Filipino man whore. Maxopata, 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 you're right. doing the radio with uh, Adam. I oh, guarantee that's how his mom talks to him. Yeah, let's hear his mom. Why are you still doing I'll the be Max shows Zapata. with uh, with that Adam guy, uh, mom? The, the, you know, the I, car guy. Uh, you know, I love you, but I don't want to be a nurse. Oh, you love me? I do. <laughs> but you're doing those radio things. It's a podcast. Yeah, radio. I look up to him. Of course, you're short. Sure, you <laughs> have to look up to everyone. Uh, you're uh, you're okay. four you know foot one. What? Hold on a second. Let me. T- I'm talking to my mom. <laughs> Ask him why you don't have insurance. Hold on a second. <laughs> why does he not have she can't, insurance? He can't hear you. Hold the phone up. Let's quick. not dress no, down I the employees. Back. I said it's November 16th, and I said that here. wasn't the call. That was the event. Yeah, and then she called it November of 2006, two weeks after. It's still For, the same month. All right. I said November 2000. And I said I November 16th, right. and you said that was the call. Wait, 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 said, wait. No, that wait was hold the, the clip. Mute the clip. I think that's right. I think Chris is right. Woo! Is, is this a clean win for Chris yeah. or not? I think it's a pretty clean yeah. win for Chris. Congratulations. But he should have said Big no. Man. Let's close the Ace Awards out with that. <laughs> yes. Goodbye, world. Goodbye tomorrow's concerns. Tell the sun Ain't no rain where I'm going Good night, friends I've made peace with All my sins To bathe In your frozen moonlight When minutes continue I'll spin with you But for now I'm taking my sweet time Yeah! Nice. Nice. Thank you. You know what he did? Our best. He did my best. Wow. That was well put together. Mm-hmm. Thank Nicely you. Nicely done. I'm very flattered. Thank you so much. Yeah, so uh, the good news is you're doing something that's your passion, yeah. working music, Yamaha videos, oh, yeah. playing and doing all that. So I'm really happy that you're moving to your passion. Thank you. And too. Uh, And also I'm glad you're leaving on great terms. I, you're welcome back whenever you want. Hang out. Uh, I'll be catch, back tomorrow. Catch everyone. <laughs> oh, well, I got to check the Costner date. Oh, okay. uh, but uh, I think it's pretty clear how we all feel about you. And I, uh, most people, you know, some people make fans at work and some people make enemies at work. And we've had people that we liked and people we disliked come through here. And uh, you're definitely at the top of the liked chart. So I thank you for working all these years. Uh, it's always been a pleasure. You've always been a delight. And I'm proud and I'm like excited for the musical future of you. And the fact that 
you know, you don't really have to get your night job and your day job to be so... You ever see that movie Flashdance? Certainly. She was a welder during the day. <laughs> And at night, she danced exotically, right? What it's the only job doing, available in Pittsburgh. <laughs> you're doing now is like if she was a dance instructor during the day and then danced at the exotic place at oh. night. If you've taken your two passions right. and got them closer That's to a perfect each other. That's metaphor, I think, yeah, of what, because you're what's great. Happening. You are a great musician, and you have a great voice, and your band is great. And so now you'll, like be around instruments, and I'm, it's probably going to creatively, the process is probably going to help the It'll other inspire, process sure. versus, can you find that clip of Gavin Newsom <laughs> making an ass of himself at SoFi Stadium, <laughs> which doesn't really have anything to do, unless you write a song about it. Right. Yeah. Which I, I could still. So I don't, just thank, thank you, Adam. I appreciate it. That's really Thank nice you, and I'm, I'm happy to, happy we're on good terms, happy I have positive and wonderful thoughts when I think about you and your family and any time, you know, Likewise. back. All right. Shaq, uh, I'll talk to you off the air. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with puberty, Donovan. Looking That's forward right. to seeing how Me that too. goes for you. Uh, you can go to adamcurl.com for all the live shows. Uh, Going to be at uh, today. I guess, right? Yeah, at Irvine at 1.30, premiering a movie. It's free. You, you can go to ampcrawl.com for that. And then Levittown, New York Governors, three shows there, June 28th, 29th. Just go to ampcrawl.com for all the live shows. Until next time, it's Adam Kroll for Dave Damashek and the Deaf Frat Guy, and of course, Chris Loxamana. Wow. Say it. Mahalo. Mahalo.